Well, I don't think this way white can fight for any serious advantage. B3, bishop b2, a5, b5, c5, and now queen a7. This is this is a mysterious move to me. I guess she wants to put the knight on d7, maybe play bishop f6 and then e5, but why to a7? Any any guess? Um, you are, um, yeah, you are asking the right question. How about if we ever get a chance to play e5, then we would be attacking c5. Right, but this is so unrealistic, I think, for black to play e5 in the next uh, 10 moves or so. Um, but main, actually, now I'm thinking it makes some sense because one of the ideas for white is to play f3 and then e4. And yes, we want to have the pressure on the d4 pawn potentially and then the c5 pawn as well. And maybe if white goes b4, now we can penetrate with the queen on a2 after. Okay. Yeah, but also, you know, queen is not the kind of a piece that you want to put when doubling on the open file. But that is that is right. But another thing is that uh, if you um, if you get your queen in the in the, your opponent's camp and it's not getting trapped, then it is actually a very annoying piece to deal with. So. This could be an idea. I'm just trying to, you know, explain this move clearly. So yes, 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 and that definitely makes sense. Okay, so um, last word about this uh, position, the evaluation. I think it's equal, and uh, if I had to choose the side, I would choose black. But it's it's very very solid for both uh, for both players. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, we can only add that, um, uh, well, we said both players come for chess family. Uh, Monica Sochko is... Is, is what? <laughs> okay, I'm afraid to confuse. Uh, Bartosz Sochko is her, her husband. Her husband, yeah. yes. Is her husband. And uh, Pia Kramling is also married to a grandmaster um, from Spain, uh, Belon. Juan Bilon, yeah. And their daughter, uh, Anna Kramling, is a very famous chess streamer. So Kramling's name, uh, as uh, well as Sochko, are ah, very, very, um, very famous on the chess scene, on the worldwide chess scene. And um, continuing the path, we have 12 more games that we haven't covered. Or maybe we should pick some. Uh... Yes, but how about we have a look at our <laughs> our star of yesterday, Nurgul Salimova, who had amazing swindler twice yesterday in the tie breaks. Once she managed to do the amazing uh, stalemate, one of the most beautiful stalemates. I mean, that could be a beauty prize, even though it's like not super high. But it's super beautiful, and she managed to sacrifice a queen yesterday, being totally lost in the first game of the tie break and making a draw. And second game, she swindled with a nice uh, queen blunder from her opponent, making it to the round two. Now, Sonimo Nurgul from Bulgaria, also a young star from the country, is facing Elizabeth Petz. And Elizabeth is the German top one seed, also one of the strongest players. Uh, uh, in Europe, I believe she's in top 20 of the world. Mm, what's her rating? 2466. And uh, that is an interesting clutch. Uh, let us see at least what is uh, the situation on the board. Yeah, so this was the uh, Semislav again. And instead of uh, Bishop g5, white played e3, which is the, you know, as popular as Bishop g5. Uh, knight d7, bishop d3, we've seen this many, many, many times. Uh, one of the most um, most most popular positions in the match between Anand and uh, Kramnik in 2008. So, and I think in that in that match, thanks to uh, better preparation this line, uh, Vichy managed to win that match. Castle a6, a4 is one of the lines, b4, knight d4, c5, makes sense, knight f6. And now actually all three captures are possible, gf may be even the strongest one. Uh, but, all right, she took on f6 with the knight, d takes, queen e2, makes sense, want to play e4, e5. And I think this was one of the Kronik Kas Kasparov's game, I think. 
And I'm pretty sure the move is queen d5. The right move is queen d5. We just need to stop this e4 idea. Uh, unfortunately, Nurgu was, uh, wasn't really familiar with the line, I think. So she just castled, but that allowed white to play e4, and that's her key idea here. e4, d7, and then Elizabeth played bishop f4 first, but then she played c5, e5 anyways. So e5 is the key idea, and now all the bishop h7 ideas are coming. Knight g5, maybe bishop g5 at some point. Uh, so... Uh, and uh, after rook d8, rook c1 happened, also a very useful move. So rook c1. We put in some pressure on the bishop on c5. Also, the idea might be to switch the rook to g4 here. Yeah, and uh, she's 20 minutes ahead on the clock. I think white has a promising position here. Yeah, and the, the rook swindler is now our favorite one in yeah. this tournament. So that would be a pleasure to see uh, rook c4 coming. Yeah, bishop g5 would have been a very nice idea, but unfortunately it fails to bishop takes f3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a nice tactic. So. All right, um, let us uh, continue the sprint. Sprint continues with the uh, Russian this game. matchup. Olga Gira facing uh, Leia Garifurna. Olga is um, in the national team of Russia and uh, Leia is about to enter this team, uh, being one of the most promising uh, young players uh, in the country. Uh, let us see the situation on the board. Also, uh, before we um, dive into, uh, into the action, uh, I believe Leia is the first or one of the... Um, one of the very rare cases of uh, uh, players who are who have who is being sponsored by by companies. Um, she does have the logos of of your sponsors on her clothes when she's playing, and that is a very big statement. It's not an um, a usual thing. Usual. Uh, we have seen, I believe, only Sergey Karakin wearing. Um, his sponsors' uh, logos on his clothes when competing before. You mean uh, among the Russian players? Among the Russian players, yeah. That is a very rare case, and especially knowing that Leah is, uh, uh, she is still a um, under eighteen. That is a very big s yeah. achievement so far. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, and I think we have one of the games finished as well. At least I see that the arbiter just came to the board uh, of, uh, I think it's Peng Zhou Kim, isn't she? Or, who is that? Or is it Harika? It's, um, yeah, I think it's a uh, player from United States uh, who recently changed the federation. No, 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 it's, it's Nino. Oh, it's Nino. Nino, and she's no, playing it's against... Not Nino. Hold on a second. No, it's not as a No, no, no. It's, no, it's we're Nino guessing. For sure. It's it's Turkish player. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> it's a Turkish player. Yeah, we get My it. Bad. My bad. My uh, bad. It's uh, Yildiz uh, Kadiolgu uh, from Turkey playing Tanchangi. Yeah, and 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 we left this game here. I was saying that it, essentially it's a draw. Yeah, White can try to push, but she wasn't trying too hard. I think. And uh, yeah, they just uh, they found the repetition as well. Yeah, everyone is you know so strong here. Yeah, and that's very nice. And that's very nice to see it. Yeah. So back to that game. Yeah, as you were saying, Leah is one of the most promising players in Russia, and uh, she gets sponsored as well, which is which is very serious. Yeah, I mean we all. I think Serious it's, money, it's really hard to progress nowadays in chess. In yeah, it's order. also about the support and it's, it's beneficial uh, to, to, to chess in general. You know, it's chess, let's admit it, is not uh, as uh, popular as football or tennis, but that is about to be changed. And Leah is one of the ambassadors for that progress to see. We do see the Simeland uh, logo on her, uh, on her short t-shirt no so um, anyway on her clothes and that is also the sponsor 
that is a new sponsor of Yanni Pomnishi for for the World Championship. And I think match. it's a feeder partner as well. Yeah, yeah and so big company. And they were the organizers of the candidates uh, 2021. Uh, 2020 and 2021. So yeah, but I believe it's been at least a year. Leah has um, uh, been representing them. So yet yeah, a very great achievement, not only as a, a chess player but also as a chess ambassador. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she she has a very interesting choice now. She can take on e5. I think that's what she's calculating right now. And Olga Gear, by the way, she was a Russian champion? Yes, she's a or Russian she... champion in 2019. Okay. She lost her title uh, to Alexandra Garachkina in 2020, but she was in uh, 2019, and still that is a great achievement, and not uh, so many have made it uh, uh, so far. So, yes, uh, still Olga is being a favorite clear favorite in this match she didn't have a successful Russian higher league but um, she is still dominating her opponent by rating and by many many grades so what do we have here on the board so we see the the Berlin again actually I was gonna say Berlin it's a little bit uh, different but the same type of scenario where uh, white takes on c6, and this is a very, very well-known position, except that the pawn is usually on a7. I don't think it makes a big difference uh, here, so the type of the situation is more or less the same. Uh, bishop e6, castle, knight e7, b3, so uh, Leo wants to play it um, calmly, but surprisingly, Olga says no, surprisingly, because she's She's also a very, very good positional player, as far as I understand. Yeah, she's very... Um, I'm looking for the word. Is it like... I, I cannot say correct player, but... Uh, and I cannot say it accurate either, but she's a um, classical player. She's a very classical player, and she's extremely hardworking. So she plays according to the position, and whenever the position is calm, and you just need to do the plans, she has a great, great... Um, uh culture and um uh, experience and understanding yeah. yeah and understanding positional understanding that's that's true and apparently she decided that you know if she plays according to the position as you said she decided that it's time to to check my white yeah why not yeah so she plays queen f6 and then the idea is to castle long and start the attack of g5 g4 bishop c3 happened g5 B4, he's in the bishop, bishop goes to a7, now queen b1, and clearly, clearly the idea is to play uh, knight xc5 now, because otherwise queen b1 doesn't make any sense. And after knight e5, uh, her point is queen, she wants to play queen b2, and uh, crush black on, on the long diagonal. And I don't know if black is actually able to, to do anything about it. I mean, it feels like he... Sh she should be able because there's just uh, she has two moves here to to fix fix uh, this problem and um, I have a feeling that it should be fixable but I don't really see how so uh, that is very interesting that is very interesting but then why is she taking her time because I mean playing uh, playing ninety one here it's 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 like a resignation, basically. This this uh, nine only one is just uh, terrible. Black plays. In fact, black can I think just play g three right now, if she wants to, and then after h takes, uh, just play h five, then h four and checkmate. Mm. Um, and it's not even forced, so we can start with h five h four as well. Um, so yeah, I think knight 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 to knight xc five has to be played. And this is this would be the critical position here. And Leah is she's nervous, but I think she's always nervous, right? Yeah, it's a no her normal state of mind. Also, um, normally she has this uh, trait, particular trait that was common to Yanni Pomishi when he was younger, uh, meaning being extremely fast and sometimes not uh, really um, thinking uh, uh, on the moves. 
playing extremely rapidly and you know like this attitude whenever you make the move you stand and you go have a walk right but uh yeah and she she's always nervous but that's not being nervous that's more like um that's not being nervous in terms of being particularly nervous that is being nervous <laughs> in a way you just uh, it's just excitement she, she, from the chess game she's just shaking That's no just... it's just excitement from the chess game uh, yeah and uh, uh, normally when you see Leia taking some time on the clock it means that she is becoming more mature I would say so that's a good sign I but mean, this is definitely the critical moment yeah but I think she should have uh, thought about it earlier because true also sometimes it can be the sign that she understood that things are going badly yes, yes. and now it's time to think while it could be already a little bit late for that it's actually i mean as i said if she plays 91 this is she, the game won't last for long and what was the reason she didn't play knight xc5 once again i don't know i don't know she 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 clearly found something she do doesn't like about it oh maybe no i was gonna say queen g5 and then bishop e5 Queen takes d2, but then Rook on h8 is hanging, so mm. this doesn't look like a refutation here. But oh. as I said, I, oh, have, I have a be, feeling. Could that be knight, uh, knight takes uh, something? N knight, uh, no, knight couldn't take anything? I mean, we can take the pawn on c3 maybe, but no. then just c takes. Oh, maybe knight takes c takes and then bishop to d4. Mm -hmm. And this does look. Really unpleasant, but she just took only five because, as I said, she doesn't. She didn't really have a choice. Yeah, she didn't really have a choice. But uh, considering that Gira played g4, she's obviously you know she, she knew that was coming, and I think she didn't take the knight on only five. She played something else. What did she play? Yes. Rook g8. Wow. This is a very calm move. Yes, because in fact, uh, right now White's knight is pinned on e5. It cannot jump. It can't really jump anywhere and create some threats because that would be just queen takes c3. Right, but what if I just play queen b2? Now we can take the knight on e5. Yeah, but then uh, isn't it a pawn down position? Yeah, but I'm attacking. <laughs> Well, I, I see that there is some compensation, but uh, I, I don't think it's uh, it's it's full. Yeah. And Rook G8 was played instantly, and clearly that's something that she she had in mind when she played G4. But I don't think it's I don't have that feeling that this is the best uh, solution for Black. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we still have plenty of games to cover. This one is very very sharp and. Uh, Right, so um, yeah, let's move on. We have another Russian player, Anastasia Bodnarok from our hometown, St. Petersburg, international master, uh, facing um, Zavatska Yolanda from Poland, woman grandmaster. And uh, what do we have here? I, have, uh... I, I wanted to say something like particular um, trait of Anastasia uh, having uh, a, uh, a double-edged position. Mm -hmm. She likes to play some sharp stuff. Yeah, sure. very sharp style right now. Usually she's the one attacking the king. Right now her king is not in the um, most comfortable situation with the pawn on h3. But from the other side, uh, there is no clear plan for black. And she has an amazing spot on d5 with her for her knight. Right, right. C uh, considering that she just played b4, she's not really worried about her king right now. And this is more of a long-term advantage for white for black yeah. it's it's not it's not that black can use this pawn h3 immediately so this was uh it's not a sveshnikov but a, could it be called kalashnikov yeah uh, the, the move so, e5. Uh, something something yeah something like this definitely so yeah it's very similar to sveshnikov but a little bit different and now uh this is some kind of theory as well h5 i think um is a standard move here too h4 rook b8 knight d5 exchanged h3 bishop went to h1 bishop b3 queen d7 c3 bishop d8 b4 and he, here we are and um 
I always like this position as white because the knight looks very nice on d5, but on the other hand, uh, you know, white has a white has a clear plan of a4 and doing something on the queen side, but usually black's counterplay is just uh, is just enough and in fact very dangerous, especially with the pawn on h3. I like this pawn on h3. Uh, maybe the plan is to castle and play g6 or 5, for example. Yes, look very risky, but why not? Right. So, uh, sharp position. And I like uh, Black's uh, situation on the clock. True. Okay, uh, things going... Uh, well, about the clock. Well, yeah, it's, it's very common for Ernest to see it to be uh, uh, down on time. So well, let's say things are under her control still. Right. Um, let's go. Our next um, pairing is uh, Gunai Mamadzada from Azerbaijan. I believe the strongest Azeri female player right uh, now. I would guess so, yeah. Yeah, facing Lara Unuk from uh, Slovenia, also top uh, one player of her country. And... Uh, this is a very close matchup in terms of rating, but uh, the more we um, go down with the with the games, um, the less difference we will see in the ratings, uh, meaning that any result will be possible. What do we have here? Uh, looks like Slav. Mm -hmm. Slav. Looks like Slav. The exchange Slav actually uh which you you know uh, that that kind of position you don't really expect expect from the change love but i think we were talking about it yesterday that you know it's actually much sharper than its reputation yeah yeah true. so i'm not surprised that we see some uh some big fight here and also i must uh, apologize because i mixed up Gunnar and in the in the first uh, day of our tournament I said that Gunnar played in the Grand Prix, uh, and I yeah. think it was uh, Gunnar, actually. Yeah, she did play in Grand Prix. She was one of the players who, uh, together with uh, Irina Bulmaga, and um, as well as uh, Jansai Abdomalik, they actually made their way to uh, the Grand Prix because of the situation uh, uh, of the... Um, um, of the, uh, I was saying, sanitary situation, which did not allow Chinese and uh, Indian players to arrive to Europe, and they were to replace uh, those, but they actually made a really great performance, um, and Gunai was one of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I think I actually played her once, and... You must uh, have. I didn't win that game. In the internet? No, uh, the live game Over the was board. like six years ago or so. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, so, six yeah, years even, ago. Yeah, even then, she, I was actually much stronger, but uh, she was already. And she was much weaker. <laughs> she was much weaker, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But even then, she was uh, a very serious player already. So uh, I think she's actually one of the dark horses of the tournament. She, she is capable of going very, very far. Yes, I do agree on that. All right, so we've seen the exchange slot. Uh, queen v3, bishop d7, queen c1. All right, this is not something we see every day. Mm, I guess after bishop g4, Laura was actually fine with a draw. Why not? But black wants to play for win. She plays e6, bishop to d3, knight f3, knight c4, bishop b4. This is all very, very standard. I mean, usually very standard, but the queen is like the main move by part is queen c2 instead of queen z1. Okay. So, uh, and then we get uh, a similar position like this uh, knight f3, e6, knight e5, bishop e4, bishop to d3. In fact, this line was very popular like seven years ago or so. And now, yeah, queen d1 is clearly not the way white fights for the advantage. 94 takes 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 some crazy stuff knight went to g5 and after bishop a5 laura has uh two options first one is to take on c4 but that 
I get. I, I guess uh, Bishop B5 is the idea of Gunai uh, here, and after Rook takes C8, Bishop takes C2, uh, Rook takes D8, Bishop takes, Rook has to go to C1, and then the simplest is just to take and play King D7. It's just a draw after Rook C8. Yeah, correct. So this is one option, and the second one is Knight X E4, which also looks uh, pretty interesting because because of this D6 square. Although maybe something like F5 is possible. Mm. What would be the evaluation here? Oh, well, it depends on what's next move, I think. Uh, <laughs> Look at the clock. Gunai has only 34 minutes, while Lara has uh, 1 hour 14. That is uh, a huge difference, and we are on the move number 22? Looks well, like? it's actually move 17, I think. Oh. 16, so she's uh, thinking about her 17th move. Right, so this is... Uh, this, is, this looks like a preparation from Laura. I can't believe it was because she, again, she was okay with a draw here after bishop g4. Mm -hmm. Because uh, she played knight b3, bishop d7, queen d1, now bishop g4, we get this more or less the same. Actually, you know, now I'm thinking about it, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, because bishop g4, we have the same position as here, but the net is already on a5. And, ah. and maybe white can, uh, maybe it was mm -hmm. your favorite disappearing move. Yeah, there must be a term for this one. <laughs> but it is, it is a great strategical tool. Once you master it, you, you master it forever. Yeah. And then your pieces <laughs> disappear all the time. Right. <laughs> right. But she just played rook c4, and I think we're going to see that line uh, we just uh, looked at. Uh, after bishop b5, and uh, I think this this should be a draw. Oh, wait, she just took on c4, so maybe black is still trying uh, to in, push, yeah, in, in the aggressive mood. Uh, queen takes c4, but now e4 is hanging. So, what's the plan? e4 is hanging, and we do have to defend it. How about bishop c6 or something like that? Bishop c6. Yeah, actually, it makes sense. I was a little bit worried about some stuff like knight takes e6, but I'm not sure if it actually works. So I have queen e7, and if you go queen c8, I have bishop to d8. Mm. And this is a little bit artificial, but uh, playable. I think it's just winning for white. I don't see full compensation here. I'm sorry, for black. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, uh, looks like Gnai is trying to push here, even though she's black, uh, but she has not so much time left. Uh, basically, one and a half minutes per move or so. <laughs> so, uh, let's move on. Yeah, moving on, we have, oh boy, we have uh, eight more games that we haven't covered. Alisa Garamova, another legend here, facing yeah. Huang Tang Trang from Hungary. I'm surprised to see Alisa only with an international master title. I genuinely thought she was a grandmaster. I thought I thought so too, so too. And I think she's actually the second most experienced player of the field. Yeah. After Pia. That's true. That's true. She was, uh, yeah, she was dominating a woman's. Uh, um, chess scene uh, for from for decades, and uh, yeah, she's facing Grandmaster from Hungary, European champion, 2013, as far as I remember. And also a very experienced player. Indeed, uh, both of them are not as active as they were before, but they still continue to play. Uh, Alisa was actually playing in the higher league. And uh, I might not be surprised uh, to see Alisa being uh, even more active than Huang Tang Tang, but that is uh, another story. And I'm afraid we were not in time to cover all the games yet. But Before. We'll come, come back to that. Yeah, we'll definitely come back after the break. We, were, we still have 
eight more games to cover and I believe we shall see a lot of uh, action once we come back because this is gonna be closer to the time travel and this is where all the fun starts. Yes, that's what we're all waiting for. <laughs> The FIDE World Cup and the FIDE Women's World Cup kicked off on June the 11th in Sochi. More than 300 chess players take part in these large-scale tournaments, and the cup winners will be determined by the knockout system. The women's tournament will end on August the 2nd, while the open event finishes in August 6th. The first round, also called the qualification round, was held from July the 12th to July the 14th. 216 participants representing 85 countries began the event, 142 of them in the Open Tournament and 74 in the Women's Tournament. The first round didn't bring any noticeable surprises. In the Women's Group, most of the favourites to advance the second round where they will be joined by the top seeds. Though, as usual, there were always some surprises. Women International Master Turkmen Mugzol from Mongolia defeated one of the favourites, Grandmaster Marina Brunello, 2-0 from Italy in the classical games, while young Wooden Grandmaster from the USA, Jennifer Yu, took down the experienced Wooden Grandmaster from Poland, Claudia Kulon, in the tiebreaks. Several other matches were definitely very close for some of the favourites. Shahanda Wafa from Egypt really had Almira Chipkenko to the test, but in the end, the rating favourites prevailed. 
Out of the 108 matches, only 28 needed a tiebreak to determine the winner. In these tiebreaks, everything is decided in fast formats, rapid games, and, if necessary, blitz. On July the 15th, the tournament will include the waiting favourites, 50 grandmasters in the open group, and 25 in the women's group. World champion Magnus Carlsen has already arrived in Sochi, and his performance will deserve special attention. Stay tuned.
And welcome back to the round two of FIDE Women's World Cup 2021. Me, Dina Bellinka, together with Alexander Shimanov, uh, very happy to um, welcome you back. Uh, there are still some games that we didn't cover. Uh, shall we uh, go with them or look at those who have already finished? We we have only two results so far and we've covered all uh, both of the games. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the games we haven't looked at yet. Uh, and I guess we should do it quickly, right? We don't yeah. have to uh, stop uh, by the opening moves so, um, in every game. So uh, let's just uh, see what are the current positions. And the first one is uh, the Nilan against uh, Bulmaga. Mm -hmm. uh, both very experienced players. Uh, Irina Bulmaga has played in uh, Women's Grand Prix in May in Gibraltar. Uh, she was replaced in one of the players who couldn't arrive. And uh, Daniela Irina is the strongest Armenian player. Also, by the way, a legend. She is. She is. Uh, she's been uh, around for about 25 years, I would say, or so. At least. Uh, at yeah. Least, yeah. So uh, she's the more experienced player in this uh, in this match. But uh, looking at the position, I can say that I really like Black. Uh, this is a typical isolate, um, isolate pawn position, where Black doesn't really have much trouble on the king side. Um, this g6 pawn basically stops all the uh, potential uh, attacking ideas for white. And this a3 pawn is kind of weak, as well as d4. And uh, Irina just played uh, queen a5, pointing out that a3 is actually a serious weakness. How's, she, how's white going to defend? I don't think she really wants to play bishop c1. No, she On the does other not. hand... Uh, I mean, if we don't protect the pawn, Black will just take it on the next move. So uh, this looks uh, nice for Black, I would say. And our idea is to bring the second rook to d8, is to put more pressure on d4. Uh, d4. Uh, also, there is some e5 stuff. There's some e5 stuff at some point. And uh, I think this is actually worse for white than it looks. Worse than it looks. Interesting. Yeah, this uh, isolated pawn, but definitely not a good one. And um, yeah, we can definitely claim that black is better. Black is totally fine. Yeah. So the next one is Amarisiba against Almiros Kripchenko. A French derby, as we said, uh, number one and number two of um, France are facing each other, and only one of them will manage to make it to the round three, which is quite a pity. And uh, Marie, both of them, in fact, both of them uh, had to qualify to the round two. And uh, they managed well. Uh, Almira did suffer a little. Yes, they were witnessed some uh, some uh, some drama. Yeah, in her games, she was facing this uh, player from Egypt who played extremely well, uh, you know, surprisingly to her rating. And at some point, we even thought that she was close to win. But either way, uh, those two are facing each other right now. And uh, what do we have on the board? We have a uh, Scandinavian defense. Uh, apparently, that will be the main opening for Almira in this in this tournament. Um, clearly, not the most principal opening. But as far as I understand, Almira doesn't play chess uh, full time nowadays. So for her, she just uh, decided to choose a, an opening where you know she she knows the plans, and it's hard to get a bad position out of the opening, even though you know you probably won't be able uh, to equalize with moves like that. Yeah, that is true, but at the same time, um, well, it depends uh, how many different openings she plays uh, uh, in general, because normally the um, the bright side of uh, playing Scandinavian as black is that if uh, white doesn't expect it, then you can easily get uh, a decent position and play the structure. I personally know that uh, having played many Scandinavians looking for an ideal Karakan structure. But speaking of bishop on g7, it's not a kind of a Karakan structure. Uh, it's, it's not, yeah. Uh, but this structure itself is... Um 
is uh, is something we can get from uh, a lot of openings scandinavian the caro the other kind defense as well and uh uh, I don't think the Scandinavian was unexpected because that's something what Almira played yesterday. And we both saw that, yeah, in, indeed. Uh, in this position, as usual, I would say, it's uh, slightly worse for black, but very, very solid. Yeah, also, interesting point, these two players, even though they are like very familiar to each other and uh, they play for the same team, they do not face each other that often because Murray doesn't like both of them do not actually play in French championships and French national championships. They could actually face each other in top 12, but uh, yeah, that is um, lately that is not um, as often, let's say, as if we were to compare Gira versus Garifulina or uh, Bibisara versus uh, Jean Right, right, right. So, yeah, as I was saying, this is slightly worse, but super solid. So I think both players should be satisfied with the outcome of the opening. Although it's funny to talk about the opening because, you know, they both have less than half an hour left. Oh my goodness, that is true. That is, that is pretty weird. Like being in the commentator chair, you ask yourself like, what did you spend time on? Exactly, but when you play yourself, it's yeah, it's it's a little bit different, right. but still, it is not very practical. But at least we cannot uh, blame them because both of them do enjoy spending time in the opening, at least in this game. At least in this game, and I can tell from my experience, you know, I don't play that often nowadays. At least the classical tournaments, and the last one I played in two or three games after my preparation finished, I spent 45 minutes on, on the very next move. So you were a fan of Alexander Grishuk then? Well, I'm a big fan of him, obviously, but uh, I, I I used to play much, much faster, but it's not the case nowadays. So um, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, I, I totally get the players that they, yeah. they want to use their time properly. So objectively speaking, that is not the, the, the practical approach. Uh, we would recommend to to others it's not but it's it's not a bad one let's put it this way all right all right so the next one is actually uh, irene sekundar playing against valentina gunina mm. and as we all know uh, valis games uh, always fun and this one looks like uh, uh, it's not an exception? Definitely not an exception. Yes, Vanya is a very creative player and her games get extremely sharp. Sometimes, well, often she is double-edged and even can be exaggerating with her initiative. But the point is that her opponents do not uh, manage to, to refute this, uh, this kind of uh, arrogant uh, style. And uh, this could be the case here. Irene is also a, um, a very well-known player. She's actually a big star in Indonesia, especially became uh, even more popular uh, since the latest, um, the latest um, shocking uh, event in the internet where she had to prove uh, the, uh, uh, that, that the player, another player from Indonesia was or was not a cheater by facing him. And that match was recorded and seen but by, by more than one million people, which was an absolute record of any, any chess broadcast uh, the, um, the world has ever seen. So, um, having described the players, what do we have on the board? I see that the rook is hanging on a4, as well as I see that the uh, bishop is hanging on c1. So um, I'm not actually sure what uh, Irene Irene's plan is here, and we can see that Vale is you know, she's just walking around, uh, looking confident, and uh, I actually don't really see how White can uh, save the piece here. Maybe you have some ideas, Dina, but I. I uh, both pieces are hanging. Both pieces are hanging, but this is interesting because it is once again uh, opposite castle. But um, and the, the, there is X-ray, but no rook can come to C1. So uh, in fact, um, black is yeah, black is uh, attacking two pieces. Not clear how to defend them. There is knight C3, but knight C3, knight takes C3. Right. I just take the knight, and the rook is still hanging. Yep. 
Oh, maybe rook uh, to a3. Rook a3, and then I take the bishop. No, 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 no. After knight c3, knight takes c3, rook a3. Oh, wow, this is uh, this is very interesting, but it's hard well, to believe it's it's working. At least something. At least something, right, right, right. Well, what? No, I was going to take on c1, but then just rook c3, and if I. Well, maybe this is the chance for white here. Maybe this is the chance, and this is a very interesting tactical idea. Although, can I play knight e2? Takes, and then knight takes c1. And then at you least will, queen you will be trapped, right? or yeah, queen e3. Or queen a3, yeah, the knight is getting trapped, and we yeah. will get it back. So, yeah, pardon me. With this a disposition, by the way. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, white won't be worse at all. So, um, White, white won't worse, yeah. 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 She she won't. So, uh, um, yeah, this is interesting, and I think after knight c three we are forced to take mm -hmm. the knight, and then uh, are we forced? No, we are but, not. Well, Our I mean, knight is good on d five. I mean, we are forced if we want to win the material. Yes, if we want to win something, then we are forced. But black is a pawn down, right? If I'm counting correctly, right. six versus five, so. If white gets to save the material, then um, she she should be better, right? Mm -hmm. But we can see that Irene is thinking, and she, as like as far as I can see, she's she's got only ten minutes left. Our PGN files tells us twenty, but in fact, I just saw on the video that uh, only ten minutes left, and Vali is walking around. I, I think uh, you know this idea. When when we in such desperate situations situation, you should be able to find this idea, right? Yeah. And the fact that she's not making her move uh, tells us that uh, there's probably something wrong here. And I I, I feel that you know this uh, this is uh, this is some position where black should have some tactical solution. For example, maybe even that be five and then queen c4 but at the very least we can play rook a3 right so this is not too bad for black and um but maybe irene just doesn't see it and but if she doesn't then she's just uh, in a lost position yes this is that situation that you have already mentioned several times uh, that whenever you do not have any choice it's pointless to waste your time when you can just move and then think Right, right, right. But here the solution isn't that obvious, so maybe she just doesn't see it. Mm. Maybe, but wait, I found it in a couple of seconds. You, oh, you did, but it's much. Oh, it's <laughs> sometimes obvious. it's much easier to 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 find a difficult move from you know from away from the board. Ah, right? I see your point. Okay, um, moving on. We still have some games that we did not cover. But Irene is about to make a move, and she plays knight c3. Okay, yes. and good point. She has to play rook a3 after that, and uh, we'll see how Vale will handle this. Uh, but looks like the game will be decided, can be decided in the next uh, two, three moves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Absolutely. let's move on. You're right. Uh, we have to cover some other games as well. And this is a uh, young star from Russia, Karis Saib, uh, playing against... Uh, Karis Saib, yes. Yeah, so uh, we have her um, facing... Uh, Karis Saib is facing Natalia Buxa. And... Uh, um, and... Uh, and... And... and uh, and uh, that is interesting. So um, Natalia Buxa uh, from Ukraine, Carissa from United States. Uh, um, what do we have here? We have a very interesting position, but unfortunately, I will have to leave you for around ten minutes. So uh, oh, uh, you will you will be the the one who will explain what's going on here. Okay. Right. So. Uh, Oh, we do have a result between Marisi Bag and um, Marisi Bag and 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 uh, Amira Skripchenko. That is an interesting one. What happened in that game? Let us have a look. 
Um, da, 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 Marie Sebag versus Almiro Scription. Kadari is a three times repetition. This is what happened here after uh, Bishop F6. Um, it was where did, where was it? Uh, bishop e6, bishop uh, b3, uh, knight c7, bishop f6, bishop h6, bishop g5, bishop f6, bishop h6, bishop g7, three times repetition. I shall say it is a success for Almira Skripchenko because she was having black pieces and she played Scandinavian, which is uh, more or less uh, still dubious uh, opening. So Marie did not manage to prove uh, the fact that Scandinavian is a dubious one. She didn't manage to use white color. Yeah, psychological advantage is definitely going to be on Almira's side after this game. Let us move on to where we were before. Because this, uh, yeah, we did not yet cover. In fact, we did not yet cover five, five games. Uh, so far and Carissa Yip versus Natalia Buxa is the game that we are going to see right now. Um, Carissa Yip from United States, a promising um, rising star who also concentrated, decided to take a gap here from university and concentrate on her uh, chess. Facing Natalia Buxa, also a chess professional Olympian, uh, Olympiad player for Ukraine. Let us see what is here. Oh, that is an interesting position. Um, yeah, pretty uh, uh, double-edged because of uh, basically opposite color castles. Yeah, opposite castles. Well, whenever we have opposite castles, it is always uh, um, double-edged because uh, both sides are trying to attack. And uh, the question is, whose king is safer here? Is it king on b1 or is it king on e7? That is the question. Um, in fact, surprisingly, both of the kings uh, seem pretty uh, safe here to me. And uh, yeah, so, uh, well, trying to evaluate this position still looks like the advantage is on the side of uh, white because uh, they have uh, they have more space, and that is a nice thing. They have these pawns, h4, g4, f4, and even c4, while black is kind of passive. So I would say the advantage is definitely on the white side, but um, yeah, not so sure. Looking at the clock, 16 minutes for Natalia Buxa versus 28 minutes for Carissa Yip. We do know that time advantage is as important as uh, material advantage. So I would say by all these parameters, Carissa is doing great. What was the opening just out of curiosity? It was knight of three, c5. Oh, that is, that is a... Uh, what is the race the arrows? Knight of three, c5, e4, e6. Ooh, so it started with ready and just a move after it switched to the Sicilian defense. Wow, that is a that is a change. That is a big change in um in the space space of two moves that is a dramatical change i would even say i'm wondering if um they were surprised to such a move order but well obviously when natalia plays c5 on knight of three she is definitely ready to go for some Sicilian uh structures that is that should not be uh, yeah this shouldn't have been a surprise for carissa but that's a very curious one and now we have some kind of a pulse variation, i believe uh, which uh yeah, with this sharp approach of a long castle, f4, b5, as we said, both trying to attack, and yeah, it transposed to uh, transposed to some kind of um, uh, <laughs> special position with the king on e7. We do not see that king so often, and while we were uh, covering the opening, there have been already moves. More precisely, there has been a pawn break after g5. G5, H takes G5, A, F takes G5, and now Carissa has some pressure on F6. F6, yeah, good, very good, uh, um, very good approach. But the question is, what is happening after pawn takes? 
Now Pontex. And how about Rook takes uh, G5 or, or Queen takes G5? Rook takes G5 or Queen takes G5? That is, uh, oh, they're having moves on the board. This is what happened. H takes G5. Now we have, uh, uh, now we have F takes G5. Now we have H takes G5. And rook f what? This is what happened? H takes g5? No, wait. How did this go? So f takes g5, we had... Uh, we did have uh, f takes g5 and rook f1. Okay, so this is the, the way it went. Wow, that is very nice. Now threatening queen... Ready in queen f6. This is the idea. I see. I see the point. Okay. Yeah, very, very strong idea. I'm wondering if Natalia was surprised by this one. Could be. That's not the kind of a move that you see immediately. Very nice um, approach. All right, moving on. We didn't see everything yet so far. Uh, how about we continue with the game of... Uh, who do we have? We have... Uh, Yekaterina Atalik playing Pauline Gishar here. Uh, Yekaterina from Turkey uh, facing uh, uh, facing uh, French player Pauline Gishar who managed to qualify from the uh, from the round one. Ooh, that king on F1 looks uh, yeah looks uh, pretty. Pretty, uh, yeah, I, I'm worried for this king. I'm worried for this king. It's, uh, there's this diagonal, you see that it's uh, actually cutting everything and, uh, oh, seems pretty weak. All right. So before we try to evaluate this position, let us see how it, it, it all came here. So we had d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, let us raise the arrows. Um, so we had knight d7. Oh boy, what is this opening? It's uh, very special, all right, with short castle. Now d4 is definitely a weakness. It's an isolated pawn. And f5, wow, what a dynamical approach. f5 uh, now using the advantage of the developer and the fact that the king of your opponent is still in the center. Nice, f5. E takes f5, queen b3, short castle, knight g5, now b5, knight takes b5. Oh, that was a pawn sacrifice. b5, knight takes b5 with the idea of both players are playing extremely dynamic. Knight takes f7, rook takes f7, bishop takes f7, king f8, and now let's admit it. Black has two pieces for a rook. But the pawns and the pawn, yeah. So white has a rook and a pawn, but a passed pawn. Well, I say let's admit it, but I don't know what I can admit in this kind of position because it's so uh, it's it's so concrete. In fact, and it's uh it's hard to say. Um it's hard to evaluate it without calculating, so I guess players know better than we do what is uh, going on here. Yeah, very interesting to see what's going to be next. All right, and we do see um, Yekaterina Atalik uh, right now on the screens so far. All right, moving on. Who else uh, did not we see yet? We saw, um, we still have uh, three more games. Anna Oshenina from uh, Ukraine facing Karina Sivka from Poland. Uh, we shall see this one. Anna Oshenina is the former world champion, so she's also a favorite. She is in the count of the players who are uh, among those former world champions that we have here. Approximately the 22nd one. Yes, and as you can hear, you cannot see, but you can hear my dear colleague is back. Which means that I have to leave him right now, or that, maybe not. That is true. That, that is true. true. So I shall leave you with Anna Ushenina playing against Karina Sivka, and you will be having a lot of uh, joy uh, covering this one. I have no doubt about that.
I have no doubts about that. And yeah, we we had a further result. I think Dina. I did not, uh, no, I didn't mention that. I just went through the games of uh, uh, of the players and passing by the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that game we were talking about, Marisiba against Armiro Skripchenko. I was saying that White is slightly better, but apparently she didn't really think so, and ju they just repeated the moves. I don't think Rook F1 actually happened, but yeah, it is what it is, and uh, we we have seen three three draws so far. So yeah, uh, Anushenina she is playing some uh, some Catalan against Karina Sivka, who uh, had a long day at the office yesterday. She won uh, her tie break against Svetlana Demchenko from Canada. And looks like White got a very pleasant advantage here. I don't think D takes C4 is something that uh, people usually play in this position. Usually they take on E5, and then Knight goes to G7, and then B6, Bishop B7 is the idea. Uh, after D takes C4, White just uh, gets a Dream Catalan which is you know a very pleasant position to play white managed to weaken the uh, black's uh king side down g7 isn't really isn't really a great piece uh the only optimistic thing for black is that anna only has tw 12 minutes left so uh we'll probably see a lot of uh a lot of adventures in this game, but objectively, why it should be better thanks to this uh, uh, weak pawns on the king side, and the king isn't uh, isn't really safe as well. Although black has a nice bishop on c6, and uh, the knight can potentially come to d5, so uh, this this game is far from being over. That's for sure. Uh, the next one, Yulia Osmak playing against uh, Batuyak Mangutol from Mongolia, and here we had a Spanish. Uh, Spanish opening where uh, Black just played uh, bishop to g5. Mm, she wants to exchange the bishops, the dark, dark square bishops, although I'm not fully sure what's happening after bishop takes c5. I guess the idea is to play something like queen c7, attack the bishop, and then a bishop goes to b4, protecting c3, then a5 is strong. So, uh, yeah, I think this is probably the, the point here. I can just play it slowly, like uh, queen to e3, but overall I think black's position is totally fine. She controls the center very well. Uh, her knight is about to come to e6 or c6, and uh, yes, white has a very nice bishop on this diagonal, but that's more or less the only advantage white has in the position, so I would say it's around equal, and both players uh, approaching the, um, the time troubles, so this is going to be going to get interesting very, very soon. And I think this is the last game uh, which we have to look at. And this game is Anna Matnadze, who also had a, a very tough tough first match, but managed to go through. And she's facing Olga Badelka from, from Belarus, a young, promising, promising player. Um, I actually had a very unpleasant experience uh, experience playing against her in the rapid game. I lost badly, so I know for sure Olga is very very strong. And uh, on the paper, she is a very slight underdog, but um, in my opinion, she's actually a little favorite here. And as we can see, uh, Black is a pawn up. Yes, your king is a little bit exposed. But on the other hand, you know, white pieces are still on B, um, minor pieces are still on B1 and C1. Um, and this actually looks like a healthy extra pawn to me because I don't really see how uh, white can exploit the, the weaknesses on the king's side. The knight on G5 is really nice as well. We can jump to F3 or H3 at some point, and um, C5 may be coming. Um, D4 actually looks interesting, hitting the queen as well. So I I think black is just a healthy extra pawn. So, uh, but Delke is doing great here. If she wins the her first game as as a black, you know, it will be really really hard for her opponent to to get back in the match. So um, 
Yeah, uh, I think we finally covered all of the games and we see the result on the second board where Katerina Lagno apparently she couldn't really prove any serious advantage here as wide, so um, we left this position after the opening um, move c3 where bishop e7 happened, f4, and uh, white was allowed to play f5 at some point, which I think she should have tried, but um, she didn't, and um, looks like, uh, you know, Theodorov handled this position very, very well. Before h5, we went for the end game, and uh, the bishop pair compensated uh, the, um, the weak pawns here, and the fair result looks like Black was never really worse at any point, so uh, impressive defense by Theodora, and uh, tomorrow she's white, and this is the fourth uh, draw of the, of the round. Let's see how how uh, Gareshkin is doing. Looks like she's actually pawned down here. I mean, maybe thanks to this uh, knight on f4, uh, her compensation is, is good enough, and the bishop is probably coming to d5, um, but I don't think that black is is any better here. Yeah, so uh, as we can see on the camera, uh, bishop g5 has been played, and um, now we put some pressure on f3. Actually, you know, knight takes g2 is a threat, knight takes h3 is a threat as well. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I was, I was going to say that... Uh, like just can't be better, but now I'm looking at it and uh, looks like Black at least has full compensation here. So definitely she's the one who who's having some initiative here and also a little bit more time on the clock. So uh, yeah, um, Black is doing fine at the very least. Next one, Maria Muzichuk is playing as black against Inda Gaponenka, and we left this uh, game. There was some uh, some Sveshnikov line where uh, I think Maria surprised her opponent with the move uh, uh, with the move knight to e7, and after uh, knight c2, knight takes d5, queen takes d5, rook b8. Uh, black uh, managed to first equalize i think and then uh, uh we got this position where i i i feel like um in actually i made a serious positional mistake because here she played rook to d5 allowing black to take and uh we get this endgame which at first looks like it should be a uh, that draw because of the opposite color bishops but in fact, this position is really unpleasant, uh, and we just uh, saw a game between Jan Nipomnici and Ivan Saric, where Ivan Saric actually managed to win a very similar position. I think they just had an extra rook on a8 and a1, but it were, more or less was the same position. And this is a, the, as I said, just a bad decision by Inna because she should have played just something like Bishop f3, and she's no no. She just can't really be worse because d6 is always weak. Uh, after playing uh, rook d5, takes, takes, takes. Now d6 is no no longer a weakness. We have f5 ideas. The bishop will probably come to b6, pointing at the weakness on f2. And uh, after rook c8, uh, f3, bishop went to d8, indeed. g3, g6, f5, h4, so some natural looking moves. I'm not saying it's going to be easy for Black to make progress, but definitely Black is the one who who is playing for win here, and uh, she's also 32 minutes ahead on the clock, 31, which is obviously very serious considering that uh, there are still um, 11 moves to 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 make to the time control. So Maria is doing great. Um, yeah, all the everything is in her hands, and I think she can actually um, put a lot of pressure on her opponent's position. Uh, her sister Anna, she is playing white against Tadi Fabrikman from. Uh, from um, the from the United States, yeah, and welcome back, Dina. Thank you. 
And we finally covered all of the games, like every single one of them. So uh, I don't know what else we can do. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Yeah. What, what, what do you usually do when you have covered all the games? Uh, you go on the second, uh, second journey, second, uh, second circle. You start again uh, from the very beginning. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Yeah. Good, good, That's good, exactly good. what I'm doing. We, uh, we, we have a now result. Actually, your opponent of the first round managed to hold um, no Katerina Lagnon. Like, no. no way. That's an amazing achievement for Teodora. Wow. So exciting. How did it go? Yeah, so we left this uh, game around here and uh, looks like uh, Teodora was actually much more precise than Alexander Goreshkin in her game against Pankratov. She didn't waste time on G6. And uh, we're just in time to get enough uh, enough counterplay here. Wow. Queen e8, queen went to g6, also a very nice uh, idea. And then a5, b4, h5, training some h4, h3 stuff, uh, queen g3, and we got this end game, which is turned out to be just too cool. Yeah, that is uh, wow. You see, that means that Theodora did have did take some time but it was not uh, because she didn't know it was because this is just the way how she approaches the opening and the early middle game yeah that's very likely at least uh, what we know for sure is that she handled the situation very very well and um, yeah, not going to be an easy match for Katerina for sure so yeah we've looked at uh, Maria's game as well I was saying that black is uh, Black is better, I don't know how, how big her advantage is, but she's definitely better. And in this game, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is we have a very strong knight on e5 and a typical French bishop on e8. Yes, <laughs> typical. Typical reason why Mr. Uh, Grandmaster Alexander Shimanov does not uh, go for French. In fact, I do, but I don't know why I do this myself because the Karakon is clearly a better opening. But we see a uh, result, and this time it's Nino Batsolashvili, right? Um, she was playing against uh, Sakalidu. Salakidu from. Salakidu. You almost got it. Salakidu <laughs> yeah, from uh, from Greece. Right, right, right from Greece, and that game finished in a draw as well. So the last moves were. Um, this one's, and uh, it's a repetition. I think, uh, considering that this is a very, you know, even match, uh, draw is a very logical outcome. And so far, we've seen one, two, three, four, five draws, and no decisive games yet. But we will see some for sure. So I was actually thinking that uh, you know, the, like which games actually caught my attention and. Uh, the first one which comes to mind is this one. We were saying that Valentino was probably winning some material. Yeah. Apparently this uh, didn't happen. So yeah, and we see Castinuk against Corey Daisy. We can take a look at this one as well. Quick look, uh, she is white. We see some other results as well. And this is Magnus Carlsen who just finished his game in the open section. Oh, nice. What is the result? Well, we don't know, but I assume he won. <laughs> All right, Just I because see. he's yeah, he won. Carlson. He he won. He won. I have the results. Right. That is a spoiler, but that is not the tournament that we are covering because uh, uh, we cover women's section. And um, yeah, what do we have next? Yeah. So this is uh, Alexander Kastanu playing against uh, Daisy Corey. And I was saying that I wasn't a big fan of Black's position the last time we left it, and I'm still not a huge fan, to be honest. So nothing changed? Yeah, that like the structure hasn't really changed. And uh, again, this stupid bishop on d7. Hello, so, hello uh, bishop. But that is not a French bishop in this case. Unless, um, why? That was not a French, was it? It was. Aha, uh -huh. makes sense. That is why the bishop is uh, stupid. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I still like white a lot. Uh, uh, this structure isn't safe for black at all. This bishop is very restricted by its own pawns and the white pawns as well. Basically, the only thing white needs to do is to play bishop d3 and then take on f5 
placed an on d4, push e6, and that's game over. So I'm actually not sure how uh, Corey will react to bishop d3 here. Even though, yeah, so the bishop was on d1. I was I was curious how why she didn't play bishop d3 at once, but she just played bishop e2, and now she should follow it up with bishop d3, I think. Yeah. yeah this looks uh, extremely difficult for black. Um, and she also has no time left. Almost no time left. Uh, three minutes uh, for 12 moves to make, and this is a serious time trouble mm. for Black, as well as a serious trouble <laughs> on the board. Yes, that is uh, the right way of putting it. Uh, okay, um, next. Uh, who is going to be next? Well, um, if we go uh, one by one, the next pair is uh, Peng Jacquin playing against Agnid Zanada. And uh, looks like Black has uh, some extra pawns here, some extra material. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So this is an extra pawn for Black. Nice but, calculation skills. Yeah, that, that's that's one of the very few skills I'm still capable of uh, you know, doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, and uh, knight takes b7 just happened actually. Okay. And this is a very strong move because if black takes the knight, we grab the bishop, then we grab the pawn on h3 in the next move, and well, that is totally fine. And if we don't take the knight, then uh, knight may come to d6, uh, and then maybe the second knight can come to e4, and this is this may get very unpleasant for black. True. So uh, I think that black should try something like knight c4, maybe. On the other hand, I just move the rook to d3, for example, or to c2, and I'm still not sure why it would be a great position for black. I have a feeling that black shouldn't be worse, but at the same time, you know, Looking at it carefully enough, I think uh, White is doing fine as well. Yeah, yeah, could be, could be. An interesting end game. Uh, either way, uh, we shall see later on how it continues. Uh, who's next in our list? Karika is the next one, and she's probably the next one to finish her game. Wait, as far as I remember, she was the last time we left her position. She was crushing her opponent in the opening. Well, and she wasn't crushing, but she was uh, definitely having a dangerous initiative. And that's where we left this position. Black actually played d3. And after queen takes d3, just played bishop e7. Basically saying, okay, I'm, I'm worse, but at least I'm not getting made in immediately. After c4, b4, e5. So uh, Kari clearly didn't want to play it slowly, so she goes goes for the kill, but we'll see if it actually worked out. Queen c6, now it's the end game, 92. Bishop went to f8. Well, uh, if you have to play a move like that, then something's definitely wrong about your position. Yeah. And then a very nice move, boom, 98. Oh, nice. Uh... Yeah. Put. Wow, <laughs> you're actually blocking the rook with the knight like this and you're not afraid of putting it uh, that far away because it's protected by the bishop. Right, and uh, we we used to see the black knight on b8, but... And now we see the white <laughs> one. Well, things change uh, sometimes right. in life. So, uh, white, black just played a5, and then uh, knight went to f3. Probably he needed some knight g5 ideas, knight h5, bishop to c7, bishop e7. Rook takes a5. This looks like uh, extra pawn, and then the very strong move, rook d1. And I'm afraid black may have to go back to e7. Yeah, that is a lot of suffering for black so far. Yeah, looks looks just lost, because even bishop e7, I just play knight c6. And, uh, this looks hopeless, and if not uh, bishop e7, if king e7, then knight c6 looks winning followed by the second knight coming to e5. And if uh, if black goes, um, if black takes the knight, obviously I just go rook to get and pick up and rook on h8. Yeah, which would also make sense. So it looks like uh, Harika is the first player who is clearly winning her game. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, Dinara Sadovacaso playing against Jennifer Yu. Yeah, that was an interesting one because Jennifer was having a great position last time we saw it. 
Uh, yeah, last time we we left here, I believe, and uh, we were saying that black is probably fine, although it's uh, still a tricky position. D5 happened, bishop e7, b4. Yeah, this should be better because white uh, managed to provoke uh, the move b4, now c4 square in, is in your hands, although after knight a5, you know, black is uh, fighting for this, uh, probably the critical uh, square. Takes, takes, takes rook d8. Now the pawn on a6 uh, uh, got lost, but uh, black gets the d pawn in exchange. And yeah, as I was saying, it's all about the c4 square. Um, queen g4. Now h6 is hanging, but a4 is hanging too. Takes, takes. And uh, my first impression if something like knight e4 doesn't work, then black should be fine. But I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if uh, black a white attack will be very serious here. So we can see that Alisa Galeno just finished her game, and as far as I can see, the king is on e4 and the second king is on d5, meaning that she probably won her game. Wow, that's very nice of her. She was facing a uh, uh, grandmaster from um, Hungary, Hungary yeah. Huang Tang Trang, and uh, what, what what did happen? So, uh, looks like um, looks like Alisa actually played uh, the London, even against this e6, f5 stuff. But the good thing about the London is it can be played against anything. Yeah. Bishop e2, c4, and then knight went to h3. This is very interesting because usually, obviously, um, knight uh, f3 is the main move. But apparently she wanted to play f3 at some point, and I think she actually did uh later on 94 she took and played f3 okay and uh, d5 she attacked the d7 pawn and apparently this pawn wasn't actually easy to de to defend and yeah this is a, a extra pawn for white in the end game and i think this is the situation where you know alice uh, can show all of her best skills True. And yeah, she changed the rooks and now she went after the b6 pawn. And then the pawns end game, which is clearly lost because black will have to uh, move the king at some point along king d5. So uh, the first win of the round by uh, the second most experienced player, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is interesting and. Uh, yeah, Alicia is a legend as well, so uh, nice win by her. And there's no result. There's no result. Gulnar Mamadova drew her game against uh, Lala Javakashvili. We were saying that what she was doing in the opening looked extremely suspicious. Remember this? Queen e4. Absolutely. Yeah, knight takes e5, and queen takes e5, and knight b4. Boom. This, this move I didn't see at all. And apparently it's very strong because now I... Do something. <laughs> what do you do? Well, one of the ideas is to take on b3 followed by rook e8. Uh -huh. And although I'm not sure what's happening if I just take on c5 here. And then the second idea is probably play bishop d4 maybe or queen takes d3. So maybe maybe queen takes d3 is actually the move or bishop takes b4 first followed by queen d3 and uh, white is undeveloped, his king is in the center, her king is in the center, and uh, this is uh, very dangerous. So she just decided to give the pawn back, but after that takes d3, it's clear that black should have a very serious advantage. And I'm actually surprised that uh, Lala didn't, didn't manage to, to convert it. Like yeah. even this position looks very, very nice because of this uh, weak e3 pawn. And then, yeah, she actually won the pawn, but I think it was a little bit too too cheap for her, you know, because she went after the pawn, but she lost all of her positional advantage and allowed white to activate her rooks and uh, rook f3, a nice move, hinting at some rook g3 ideas. Yeah, rook g3, g5, and now rook d3, followed by rook d7, king f8, rook e2, uh, rook d7, and now rook e1, and... Uh, Rookie too. So it's it's kind of funny that both sides, you know, 
double the rooks on the seven franc and uh, no one uh, could use this uh, tremendous advantage in their favor yes 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 and white was forced to to make a draw and uh, looks like a missing opportunity for for Lela in this game yeah indeed plus as you said Gulnar should have make make a draw here but you made it in a like <laughs> in an easy draw not yeah. the fighting draw because it is also exhausting for Gulnar and as we know fatigue has this uh, uh special way of uh, being uh, collective and the more right. you collect of it uh, the the harder it uh, becomes to to the further games of yours exactly so um this is a draw, and this is one, uh, the sixth draw of the round, and one result so far, one decisive game so far, and uh, the games we haven't looked at yet, uh, I mean, we looked at all the games, but let's say Paulina Shuvalo, I'm curious myself, you know, I'm personally interested in this game. So I'm actually rooting for Paulina. Oh, so, that's nice. That's beca just because she beat it, you, you are rooting for, for her. Well, you know why? Because uh, if she... Uh, goes next and um, let's say advances to the semi final or so, then I can say, Man, what could I do? Like, I yeah, I see, super, I super see. strong player. You're, you're looking for a, for an excuse for your results, exactly. That's yeah. that's how it works in uh, Russian soccer, you know. That, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> for example, when, when we lost to Denmark, <laughs> now yes. we can say we, that we, lo we lost to a very, very strong. Uh, top four team actually. I see, I see the point. Very nice strategy. So, let us uh, see okay. what happens in the game. Uh, we actually just witnessed uh, a night sacrifice, and as I was saying, that position, you know, we left it around here, saying uh, it's more or less equal. But uh, as I was saying, it's not that equal as it looks, and looks like uh, Paulina actually managed to outplay her opponent and uh, put the pawn on p6. This is a very annoying pawn now. And then uh, knight came to b3, so very, very, very well played by uh, by Paulina. And now I don't know if she missed it or she or Black is just uh, you know for, uh, she was she was forced to do that, but not a fork happened. Mm, what a what a spicy move, putting your knight in front of the pawn, which cannot take because then it would be g takes f4, check, and f3 coming with a crushing attack. No, but if you don't take it, you lose your queen. Oops. So that's a little bit uh, <laughs> oopsie. Yeah, so she, she actually took the... Changes everything. Uh, took on f3, uh, g takes f... Uh, sorry, took on f4, g takes f4, and now if king goes to h2, uh, f3 is coming. But we actually have queen g4. We actually have queen g4, but the idea I think here is we go queen c2 and then we threaten rook g6 and we Double the knight as well. Yeah. So it's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. And I'm 99% I'm sure that this was plunder mm. by Paulina because uh, this position looks strategically winning. And like, why would you allow this? Uh, this kind of tactics, right? So yes. I think she just blundered it. Maybe she's still doing well because, let's say, after king h2, f3, I have queen f1, for example. Maybe, maybe it's just a winning position for white, but uh, well, I will still claim that this was blundered. Yeah, true. True, true, true. All right. Uh, and it's, yeah, okay, moving on. Moving on. So we just, uh, so this one, this one was very interesting on paper and it's uh, probably the most interesting position we've seen so far wow that pawn on c2 looks dangerous as well as the rook on g6 yeah i'm not sure which one which which one is more dangerous this, yeah. which one is looking more dangerous but uh that is a good question that is a good question and uh i, I would seriously look at the move like knight g5 right now and uh Yes, the pawn is about to, to be promoted, but Black's king isn't safe at all. Maybe even knight f6 first, king has to go to h8, I think. Maybe, maybe knight f6, king f7 is also an option, but now knight g5 looks very tempting too. So, uh, my first instinct is that, uh, how do we say it in Russia, the mate is, 
bigger, I guess, greater, greater threat. Then the I mean, we, we say the, the, the we, promotion. We, we say that made is older, but it doesn't make any sense in Russian. Yeah, in English. it's more more important. Yeah. Or yeah. greater, you can say greater. I think, yeah, the meat is greater than the the promotion of the queen. Yes, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, and I think why the precise place should be able to to deliver some kind of uh, checkmate. Let's say queen h3 is next, and rook takes h6. Extremely dangerous. Yes, absolutely. I do agree with you. All right. Uh, how did this happen? I'm curious. We oh. had a relatively calm uh, opening. Uh, both players were trying to get to know each other, even though they have already played a million of games. Mm -hmm. They were testing the, the temperature in the room, and somehow it became that crazy. How did it happen? Um, well, I guess this is what happens in the principal games uh, very often. That you yeah. know, at some point, no one wants to to go back, and everyone is just moving forward. Yeah. So uh, C5 happened, as I was saying, this is a critical uh, idea in this in this line. And now uh, B5 is hanging, so Rook B8 was played, but that allowed D5. And then Knight came to D5. Uh, she just played... Uh, she just play. Okay, so let's quickly get to the position. Uh, B4 is a very risky move, I think, because now the C4 pawn is... Making the protected, protected it, pass pawn to your opponent. Yeah, but she clearly didn't want a black, uh, to black snack to come to C5. So queen D4, knight B6, knight F4. I'm actually not sure at all about the move F5 here, because it weakened everything on the king side, but okay. Uh, rook D1, C3, knight H5, and rook D6, and rook G6, now E6. Also, the move uh, I, I had in, my, in mind, but I didn't really mention it uh, because I thought, well, first of all, king h7, but the uh, side Secondly, knight d5 through the tempo also looks kind of tempting. So I think that, uh, king f, uh, knight f6 was a little bit stronger, but king h7 and uh, is the rook trapped? I mean, we can take from g7, but uh, we, we probably don't want to exchange that. Uh, yeah, that dangerous rook, right? No, we do not. Well, rook takes g7, rook takes g7, queen e5. They will be followed by rook g6. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anything uh, after. Oh, e7 and knight f6. Oh, getting back the exchange. Well, you get back the exchange, but then the the, the c2 pawn says hello. Yeah, but I also have queen f5, hello. Uh, well, but that's just... Uh... A check, I think. Queen e5. Oh, but the maximum you can get is is, is a draw, right? So yeah, but that's not that bad. Queen I, I, I thought White's position was very very promising. Oh, okay, right. maybe you, you can make a draw here, although Queen eight. No, H5, not sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, King h7 and no. Or check. King h7 and no checks, right? Yeah. So. Um, and that is interesting. So you thought that White was uh, having an advantage, but now we it's, don't see that uh, coming. Well, I think what White can try and. Uh, yeah, I'll show this line after the after we take a look at the game between uh, Monica Sachko and uh, Pierre Cronin, Pierre just Cronin which just finished, and this was probably a draw. At least the position was equal the last time we we looked at that game, and Monica was white. Yeah, so we see this position uh, total lockdown. Mm. <laughs> No, uh, no one can do anything. So, a very looks like a very you know, res respected draw from 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 both opponents. Uh, they respect each other at all and didn't really try too hard to to complicate the position. So back to that game. Uh, uh, BBSR is white. Yeah. So I think what should be tried. She just played this. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll I won't talk about the lines I had in mind because I was trying to exchange everything. And then try to try to go after the C2 pawn, but E7. It's just a intermediate move that we missed. We oh. missed it, but on the other hand, okay. So I take, and you probably want to play E8 queen. Check. Right? Check. So we take, take, and then queen takes. Queen takes, but I just go king H7. King H7, and what's the follow up here? Rook, no, rook E7. I play C1 queen. So. Uh, and I, I want to promote the queen anyways, right? And promote the pawn. 
Mm. We don't understand what's happening next. No, I, I think they, they, they do have some moves there. What, what was that the last move? I think we have an update. King takes g6. Oh, King takes g6, and then she took on f8, right? Uh, Instead promoting, of yeah. Uh, which is maybe a stronger move, Bishop yeah, f8. Yeah, because now we have extra check queen e8. Yeah, but we just check. We just, we just we just played e8 queen in the previous yeah line. but the bishop is on g7 it could change so something. The, the the biggest difference right is because that i will be attacking the bishop yeah but now yeah actually e5 square well yeah. so why is just winning immediately because now the knight e5 is is a <gasps> is a fork oh my god no and that way. was blood, and I think White is just winning. So I was saying that oh, you know wow. she she was doing something wrong, but in fact she was doing playing all perfectly. correct. Yeah. Wow, you know that is this is so exciting to see the clutch of such like um such a fighters and players. Yeah, let's admit it. They they do not uh, they they do have a lot of concurrence and uh, Jansaya has just um, fulfilled all the requirements for the Grandmaster title and she's the first, I believe she's the first Grandmaster in Kazakhstan while uh, Bibi Sara is also like a multiple world champion and also it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, like, this is a kind of a fight that uh, chess fans do uh, enjoy because this is uh, this reminds you reminds you about boxing and i don't know if you like the if you see the comparison but uh uh like those athletes who have no compromise to each other right so it's like mcgregor against khabib uh, so exactly right. i would call them like this and this is uh, yeah this is very interesting and it's gonna be even more interesting seeing tomorrow jansaya being forced to uh, to win with white pieces. Well, white pieces still not black. Still a chance, so yeah. But I think she will resign here. <clears throat> Moreover, I'm thinking, yeah, after King H5, if we have to take the queen, actually, because there are a whole bunch of mating ideas. Let's say Queen F3 looks like I think Queen F3 is actually the strongest move now, mm. uh, because G4, uh, you know, black will get mated. Say Knight G6, and uh, if if not g4 king h4 queen h3 is the mate yeah. so uh and otherwise i think black has to play queen g4 here but she just took the queen uh, but she just took the Sarah queen. just took the queen and actually this makes sense as well because queen f3 can be can come on the next movement b7 is hanging yeah that is so interesting those kazakhstan players so they have the, there are three girls but all of them since like all of them are, are having like um rough um competition rough competition yeah and um yeah and all of them have uh, stories behind so it's uh yeah and it's, we see the it resignation makes it even more interesting yeah we see the resignation and uh yeah this was uh and still is uh, one of the most interesting matches to me so uh and so it is to me and how old is bibi sarah 16 17? she's uh, born in 2003 so it makes her uh 17 or 18 right yeah something like that and Zansaya is is born in 2000 Zansaya is born in 2000 so there's only only three three years difference? yeah only oh, three no. years difference yeah also yeah uh Bibisar played once for for russia but then changed back to kazakhstan mm -hmm. and uh well in kazakhstan um Dinara Sudwakaso was always the number one. She also has her academies uh, by her name, but now that uh, Jansaya uh, became uh, also uh, super strong on this scene, she also has her academies uh, everywhere. So the, it's, like, you know, it's not just a uh, ch chess fight. It's not just on the, as you say, on the field of... Uh, uh, on the board, on right? like on the on the ring in the ring, yeah. It's not just on the ring; it's also in the business sphere that they are concurrents. And and, and uh, politics as well, I think. Uh, yeah, Zansai both has of some them. Yes, you're right. Rosai is uh, is in the party, and uh, Bibisar. Oh, sorry, um, sorry, it's too young yet. But uh, uh, Dinara Sudokasova is uh, ambassador for. Sh she's a, she's a president for some. Uh, some rights organization yeah also promoting uh, a lot of um a lot of very human uh human ideas yeah 
So yeah, they both a big deal. Yeah. Both a big deal in Kazakhstan. And meanwhile, we see that Anastasia Banner she she lost her game. And remember what I was saying that H three pawn is a uh, is uh, something to be worried about. And eventually, um, that uh, that pawn decided the game. So Anastasia lost. Let's uh, take a quick look what happened here. Yeah, I was saying that uh, Black should probably castle, but she didn't even think about it. She decided to go for the attack. G6, a very nice idea. King went to D7, and suddenly the king on D7 looks much safer than the king is on H1, than the king on H1 because uh, because of this pawn on H3. Yeah. Always a headache. And we just had a... Another result, right? Another result between... Uh, um... Gunai, Mamadzada, and Lara Unuk. How did this one finish? Yeah, I just wanted to show uh, this uh, very nice move, Rook E2. Yeah. And then after Bishop E2, Queen came to E4, threatening Queen G2 mate. Bishop F3, King G1, and Bishop E2 again, uh, threatening Queen G2. So White lost the Rook and uh, eventually got checkmated. Yeah, so uh, speaking of the game between Lauro Nuk and uh, Ginaima Mazada, uh, that game finished in a draw. Uh, and again, players managed to find the repetition mm. in a very interesting position. Fulfilling your demands. Well, that's not necessarily my demand, but I was saying that this is this is a special skill, I think. Yeah. Um, a lot of players uh, showing nowadays. Yeah, and just uh, this perpetual attack on the queen. Uh, so, yeah, uh, two results so far, two decisive games so far. Um, and a lot of interesting games to, to follow. To How follow. is, uh, on the camera, we see two uh, matchups between Elizabeth Betts and uh, Nurgul Salim, as well as uh, between Olga Gura and uh, uh, Leah Garifuna. Let us see this game. Um, what is happening there? Some crazy stuff as always. Um, looks like White is attacking, Black is counter-attacking as well. And uh, the question is if Black will get made. If not, then strategically Black should be doing fine. And uh, I think Black should take on. Uh, well, first of all, let's see what what's happening if if G takes H6. I think knight takes h6, king g7, queen takes f7, and this is the idea. Mm, and a nice mate. That is a nice mate. So knight takes g4 should be played. And then uh, probably queen to f8. I think I expect this position to happen. All right. And uh, the problem is there is only one weakness on g7, which is easy to defend. And I also have some counter-attacking ideas with c5 and queen g1 e5 is potentially weak so feels like black should be fine here which is uh, uh obviously good for the player from bulgaria and uh, in our game we were mentioning is uh is gary fully in a gear where it is probably just a draw yeah and uh, didn't uh, what happened uh, after the moment we left on that game where uh, where Olga didn't take the knight on e5? Yeah, she just uh, played rook g8 and then played queen g5. We're just playing for the compensation. And then wow, Did she? what what happened here? Did oh. she actually uh, manage to have that compensation? Uh, looks like it because uh, white. Allowed Black to take the, the knight on d2, queen e2, queen went back to f3, and is, is the queen getting trapped? Or what's going on here? I think rook e3 is the idea. Um, Bishop takes f takes e3, very nice idea indeed. And that's what happened in the game. f5, rook e3, f takes, now the queen has no work, I mean, it can go to e2, but then rook f2. So uh, takes, takes, takes. And now, uh, looks like a, it, it is probably just a positional draw. Right? Yeah, that, that must be um, there must be a fortress here. That's true. H four, yeah, and uh, Gear is trying. Gear is trying hard, but 
zero chances for black. At least she's trying and she's playing black, so she doesn't she didn't lose much uh, out of this, uh, let's say, uh, situation on the field because tomorrow she'll be having white and. Um, no, no, the draw is is, uh, is perfectly fine for her, uh, yeah. especially considering that, as far as I understand, she is uh, much stronger than she plays white. Okay. Uh, so uh, draw is fine. Well, you know, I don't really see the point of playing this position for too long. Yeah, well, also what is good is that for Olga, it's the first game since uh, her rough tournament. So she, it is always good to get yourself into the shape. Uh, while Garifun and Alea has already uh, played the first round uh, and uh, she has some chance to, to, um, to get some practice. By the way, uh, Leah also did not have a great uh, tournament just before. Both of the girls played in the high league, in the women's high league, Russian high league, and both of them were favorites to qualify to the super finals. But guess what? Uh, none of them made it. That is that is surprising because I think I read the interview of the winner of the women's uh, Russian championship high league. Marina Gusi, when she was saying she was sure that exactly these two players would qualify and they didn't but yeah we just see a handshake and it's a draw and i guess it's a satisfying result for both uh, sides and, and a fair result as well yeah there was some adventures in the middle of the game but uh yeah looks like uh, it's a fair result so uh we actually have plenty of uh games finished already but let's um which game we want to look at um, okay, let me uh, tell you. How about Elizabeth? Wait, did, did Elizabeth, you, we just looked at. We just looked at. That was okay. Yeah. The, yeah. And I was saying that this is probably around equal. Mm -hmm. Right. So how is? Uh, how are Muzichuk sisters doing? Muzichuk sisters. We looked at them some time ago. I was saying that this is very unpleasant for white. Still think that's the case. So maybe we should look at some other games which we haven't looked at uh, yeah, for, for the that. second time. Let's do that. Um, for example, this one. Just a random pick, but looks like an interesting position. <laughs> nice, nice, nice pick. Yeah. So Vaishali is black. Uh, I don't think I like her position here as black. What do you think? Oh, um. Now we have to take the pawn on f5. Uh, would we go with the g pawn or with the e pawn? If we go with an e pawn, that there will be pass pawn d, which is not great. And if we take with the g pawn, that we would open the king. But the king is still open; uh, is already open. So either way, black is worse. Black is worse. The only chance for her is to play queen c7 and get the queen to h2. And yet that would not be a checkmate because the white king would uh, run to e2. Well, you would have an opportunity to take the h3 pawn, yeah. try to threaten your pass pawn. But I think I'm in time to play d5, d6 and also have some threats. Well, but since I go king g7, I think the position is very concrete. So if you stop me from playing queen c7, black can basically resign. Uh, it's a strategically very bad position. Um, Imagine I could just transfer my knight from c1 to f1. That would be a dream. Um, I'm not so sure because this is uh, really, really passive. But <laughs> okay, you know, we, we all have uh, our own dreams, so I don't know. Uh, I would probably prefer to put the knight on e2, actually. That's yeah. what she did. And after queen c7, now we have queen knight 95 knight f4. Knight it's way knight better. Knight it's, it's a way better dream. I changed my dreams. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so we actually just saw another uh, game finished, but I I didn't really recognize the players, so I'm not sure who it was. But uh, maybe it was Alina Kashlinska who finished her game. This right. is something we we looked at a uh, long time ago, and we were saying that Queen B8 actually is a very interesting move. I was saying that Queen Queen E7 or any other move. Uh, the most drawish position ever, and uh, the players proved that, you know... One can never say uh, um, that a bit too early. Yeah, although this one looked, looked very interesting at some point. Um, she just played a two, but... 
Uh, what's happening in Queen E4? I guess um, Rook F7 ideas maybe. Verdio play Knight G5 mm, next. That is beautiful. I like that one. A very nice double attack. Yeah. Yeah, but in the game she played uh, Rook to A2 and then Rook went back to D1 and now White managed to get the pawn back. I mean to win the A2 pawn and uh, this is obviously a draw. So. Um, um, even game, not much was happening, although, you know, uh, much more adventures than I was expecting after, like, move 10 or so. Okay, so uh, Harika is completely winning, two pawns up. Yeah, two connected pass pawns are well known to be winning in the Rooks endgame. We have another result, uh, Jennifer Yu versus... Uh, Inaros Advocas, right? What happened in that game? White uh, won that game, and I was saying that you know if Black doesn't get made, it she should be fine. But apparently she did get made it. Rook c5, knight b3, and knight e4. Uh, no one cares about rook on c5. It's all about the bishop here. Bishop takes b2, and then rook c8. And suddenly, you look at these guys. They all so far away from the king side that uh, I'm not surprised that uh, you know Black actually. Um, Black's king actually got made it, but on the other hand, I'm not so sure what was uh, the idea if I just play king h7 here. Because in the game, after rook c8, she played queen a1 first, but that maybe put the queen even for, uh, you know, even further away from, further the, king away from the king. Exactly, bishop f4. Actually, um, yeah, the, the, the pieces are still very far away, so maybe that was the, the issue here because. Imagine I managed to bring the knight to e6, black would be just better. But apparently that wasn't the case. She played queen d1, went back, knight g5, queen b7, f6, and then after queen e4, black uh, actually received mate. Queen e4, and then king h6, I go queen h7. And after f5, queen e8, black resigned because of queen f7 on, on the next move. Do you think after the moment um, they exchanged the rooks, the position was already lost for black? Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't really know. Bishop f4 seems a little bit slow. On the other hand, uh, black, all of black's pieces are really, really, really far away from the king side. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if this position is actually lost. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So was it all well-calculated initiative and counterplay for Dinara, who uh, who did not care about that pass pawn and went for the king? I don't know uh, if she you know, calculated everything out, but I think she just felt like the, the, the pieces being so far away, her initiative should be at least good enough to always have a draw in her pocket. pocket. So... Uh, I, what I don't like about uh, Jennifer's decision is to go for queen a4 and allow white to take on h6. Yeah. I think this was way too risky. So, yeah, and uh, Harika officially won her game as well. So this is the fourth win of the round, or the fifth one, I think. One. Did we have two, any... Three, um, any, um, let's say... Um, Mm, surprises according to the rating matchup so far, apart from um, uh, Jan Sai versus Bibisara. Well, the thing is, I don't think any result is a big surprise at this point. So yeah. uh, anyone can beat anyone. And we just uh, we we see Maria, uh, sorry, Natalia Pagonina just uh, finished her game against Kukarni as well. And apparently it was a big fight, but against some um, perpetual. Mm -hmm. Becoming a tradition. Becoming a tradition. And I was saying it was a big fight, but in fact it wasn't. Yeah, it's not the first time you expect a big fight and then you get upset right. by uh, the perpetual. Yeah, but at the same time, fair results. So players, uh, both players, I think, played reasonably well. And uh, yeah, a good result for... For Natalia, for sure. I'm not sure about Kulkarni, but she shouldn't be too upset either. Yeah. Okay, so Natalia books the Carissa Yip. Aha. Uh -huh. This one 
It's interesting. Queen against two rooks. Oh boy, how did this happen? How did this happen? We lo we we left this game around here. Yeah, I was actually covering this game while you were um, you were out. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was. <laughs> where you were stolen. Rest, yeah. Where you were stolen from me, and I did say that here, White came up with an interesting idea. E takes G5, and now Rook F1, boom, intermediate attacking the Queen F6. Mm -hmm. Not an easy to an easy move to spot from uh, far away. Yes, yes, yes. And after F5, she played Rook E1, playing Rook F5. So King has to, had to go to D6. And this is very tricky. Bishop takes a five. Mm. All right. So one idea I see is that after e takes a five, we have queen d two picking up the rook on g five, right? And if rook takes a five, uh, queen g three, and then uh, the rook on b eight is getting lost. So this oh, is nice. extremely well, uh, well played by Carissa. You know, seeing this kind of geometry is never, never easy. So black had to play uh, king c7, bishop went to back to c2, and I guess the problem here is that black's king is much weaker. Like It's supposed to be more or less fine for black, but it's much harder to play with such an exposed king. So bishop b3, a5, bishop d1, and some sharp stuff in a time trouble. Queen takes b2, rook. And why did she decide to give up the bishop here? I'm not sure if she was forced to do that, but anyway, so here we got this endgame, c5 is a nice move because uh, the pawn can be taken, or will come to c4, and uh, b4 now, king b3, this is actually oh, the first time I, I think I see such, such endgame. I mean, in terms of structure. Yeah, that is very uh, special. Do you think um, White has uh, chances to win this one? I, I think. I think. Um, she, trust she the, ring, the rook to, to, to b6 should be crushing, right? Well, I just don't really see how do you protect the pawn after rook d4. Yeah, that makes sense. After rook d4, and then. Uh, in fact, any ideas of sacrificing your two rooks against the queen and the pawn would lead to a winning position? Yes, yes. The pawn and game is clearly mm -hmm. winning, so. Uh, we can see on the screen that um, Natalia, I mean, she looks focused. I won't say she doesn't look happy, but uh, I wouldn't yeah. be happy if I were her. Yeah, that is true. Um, Natalia also comes from chess family now. You know, she, her husband is uh, Rauf Mamedov, mm -hmm. uh, top um, elite grandmaster in the club of 2700, who is not playing here because one of the reasons was that he he didn't like i mean he i bet he didn't qualify through the europeans but then he had a chance to do it via the hybrid format but he was one of the of those who were against this new uh, trend and he didn't participate in the hybrid but the curious point the, the curious thing about it is that natalia his wife actually did participate in the open section for hybrid. Right, right, right. I remember that one. I was, I was also very surprised. But you know, if Antalya thinks it's fine, Rolf doesn't think uh, that's something that he should do. Why not? I mean, they don't have to do the same thing, right? Yeah, that also shows that they are very, they both very strong personalities, and even if their family doesn't make them uh, agree on uh, on different topics, uh, always agree on the different topics. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we can say that Karis is definitely pushing probably serious chances for White to win. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, all right. So moving on, uh, who else do we have um, who was uh, lacking our attention so far? How is Polina Shvalova doing? Paulina Shvalova, we left her after that uh, crazy sacrifice of the... I don't have four. Yeah. And yeah, looks like it didn't really work out for black, I think. Oh. So after, yeah, we left this position around here. She played king h2, f3, queen f1. Yeah, that's what I was saying, that this is a good option. Queen c2, and now the rook came to g6, threatening some rook g2 stuff. All right. Rook e3, and 
apparently, you know, Paulina says that you can go Rook G2, so, so what? Like, uh, the point is I always have Queen D3 check, which okay. is very annoying. And we will, if we exchange the Queens, it's obviously over. And also the F3 pawn is hanging. So that's why Queen F5 happened. And after King G, King H1. Very nice prophylactical move. Yeah, prophylactics against Rook G2. And uh, now King G8 prophylactics against the pot potential Queen D3. Aha. Uh -huh. But I don't really believe that, uh, you know, Black can uh, afford playing it this, this slowly. Also, the thing is Rook G2 is not really a threat. Let's say I make some C4. No, way, I have a Queen H3 mate. But Rook takes a 3. Oh. oh, no, no, no. Uh, so the queen is on f1, but if you go rook g2, uh -huh. I go, I, I have uh, rook takes f3, and uh, white is winning. Yeah. So c4 is, is just a you know, random move. Mm -hmm. I think knight d3 is probably the simplest. I want to put the man on e5, oh, but but this way, actually, rook g2, queen f, and the knight now is hanging on d3. Yeah, the knight so. is hanging. Although, how would you have some pawns at plus? No. But I don't want to give up my knight. I think mm -hmm. I should have something, something more convincing than that. Yeah, true, 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 true. So I think white should be winning, but uh, still some some tricks. Yeah, are indeed. In position and uh, Alexander Kastanyuk converted her advantage. And she won. Also, Elizabeth Betts finished her game. Uh, Elizabeth, he, she was she had a drawn position, and. Uh, can, can find okay, so yeah, she drew her game. As I was saying, um, G7 was the only real weakness, and it's almost impossible to get to this pawn. And I think the variation, like uh, Queen A8 and then uh, Queen E4, is. And uh, speaking of the Kastanyuk swing, she eventually checkmated uh, Daisy Corey, and this guy is still doing nothing. Oh, hello, French Bishop. Yeah. How have you been doing? Apparently not so great. Not so great at all, and uh, this was the key thing about White's advantage here, that you know, while... Um, Daisy was busy picking up some pawns on the queen side because she needed to do something. Yeah. Uh, also, in a way, trying to activate her bishop. Yes. After bishop takes b5, well, but it was too late. It was too late to um, to, to do anything. And uh, rook f4, and then I'm surprised all this bishop takes h7 stuff uh, didn't happen. It actually happened, but only after black player rook e8. And then queen g4, queen takes e6, followed by rook h6, and it's mm -hmm. uh, it's a very nice, uh, nice game by Alexander. I think uh, maybe, maybe only at this point she's probably still winning, but uh, I'm a little bit confused by all this rook f4, rook f3 stuff. You know? Yeah, but probably didn't let the advantage uh, go. So. Um, we don't have that. Elizabeth, many. so you said. Uh, she drew her game. Yeah, yeah we just looked rubbish. at this position. She drew yeah. her game. Okay. How is uh, Alexandra doing? She's winning. She's winning. Two pawns up and uh, a oh. weak, weak guy on G1. And where was the last time we left uh, on this game? Well, I was looking at this guy, uh, this position after Bishop d5, and I was saying that black is at least not worse, a full compensation. All right. And. Um, Apparently that's that's what happened because the bishop on d5 is actually really really strong and it looks like you know when when uh, white goes queen b5 and queen b2 back on the next move that tells us that she probably lost uh, lost uh, lost track at some point at, at this exact point so uh, knight takes g2 a very nice idea and then bishop takes f3 and black is just pushing with the equal material extremely tough situation. For, for white and uh, one pawn goes away and then the second one goes away and then the third one goes away so <laughs> it's, it's only it's only a matter of time when, uh, when the fourth one will go away right, right, right. i see your point um 
Right. Uh, who else can we have a look at? How is Alina Kashlinska doing? Uh, Let's take a quick look at Danilian against uh, Bulmaga. They just finished their game, and I think Bulmaga was much better the last time we looked at that one. Yeah, that, that was the memory I and had. And she well. lost. No way. How did this happen? Uh, yeah, so we left uh, the game uh, here. No, no, no. We left it after Queen A5, saying that Black is at least not worse. Bishop G5, Rook D8, Queen B3. Exchanged the... Uh, exchange of the bishops, still completely fine position for black, definitely in, in no no problems at all. Queen a5, bishop e4, knight went back, knight g3, bishop e8. Oh, so it looks like, you know, Irina just didn't really know what to do, and okay. uh, white actually slowly improved her position. Uh, even this position still looks totally fine. Knight e2, rook e7, knight e4, rook e4. Takes and then suddenly this is this is a bit of a problem. Oh, yeah. Um, among, among with uh, some background. Yeah, it's issues. not even a bit. It's a. It's a serious problem. Yeah, yeah it's a serious bite. Then Queen F six and look at this guy on here again. This is not a friend. This vision. is for the collection. You <laughs> yeah, know, it's yeah. just fulfilling the 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 amount of those who are, who are in need to to get some air. But right. How, how come we we we've seen like ten bad uh, light square bishops, and I don't, I don't remember any any dark, any square, dark bishop square bishop being bad. Yeah. So that that proves the goofless theory, you know, <laughs> that uh, he 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 was claiming that the dark squares are more important just than light squares. Interesting, interesting. Well, you know, we we did see um, yesterday in the in the tie break between. Um, Narmamaya in the Blitz game with Narmamaya and the Gulnar Mamadova, we did see that uh, giving away the dark squared bishop cost uh, a point, cost uh, a, a trip to to the second round. Right, right, right. So the point is um, never exchange the dark squared bishop. <laughs> the point is take care of your light squared bishops. This is the lesson that we learned today. And speaking of lessons, I do believe we still have more to see uh, on this uh, first game of the round one. I'm trying to pick a name who we didn't uh, see yet. Um, Valentina Gurina versus uh, Irene Sukandar. What was there? Uh, yeah. And it looks like Yulia Asmog just finished her game. Uh huh. Let's have a look. And uh, Black one, I believe. Yeah, looks winning. Looks, looks winning. Looks winning the here. pawn is unstoppable, and uh, the player from Mongolia. I think she's an underdog in this uh, in this match, but uh, she's she's also very experienced. I remember you know seeing her name like 15 years ago or so. So um, she's definitely very very dangerous. And uh, let's see. Yeah, she was a she was a piece up. Uh, and apparently, uh, just a just a very clean win by her. Ninety six, uh, and looks like it was some some miscalculation from White because after knight of seven, a very strong move, queen b two, uh, hitting the rook on a one, rook has to go. Then the bishop on a two is attacked as well, and Black White didn't get enough compensation here. So uh, very nice win by. Uh, by the player from Mongolia, and we just uh, saw Olga Badelka playing against Anna Matanza as mm, black. That is an interesting one. And I was actually saying that even though on the paper Matanza is the favorite, I think in my in my eyes uh, Olga is a slight favorite of this pair. She might be favorite by age uh, if you uh, if you put it in that angle. Also, I believe Anna Matnadze gained uh, gained some reading recently. Um, yeah, well, uh, but by papers, oh, there are only two rating points difference between them. Yeah, that's it's what actually I was saying. Not a difference at all. Yeah, that's what I was saying. And also, the last time I glanced at this position, uh, it looked just winning for Black, to be honest. Uh, just a healthy extra pawn, but something went wrong. Uh, I don't like the c5 move at all. 
uh, I think uh, considering that Black had just a healthy extra pawn, there was no need to open up uh, the position, especially giving some space to the rook on a4. The rook on a4 is, you know, it looks really stupid, so just play something like c6 and uh, let this re uh, the rook stay on a a4. Mm -hmm. Instead, c5 happened. Then, <laughs> you know, so in this position, we have the rook. A very stupid rook on a4. <laughs> now we suddenly have a rook on d4 and a really weak pawn on d5 as well. Yeah. So, yeah, this c5 is clearly uh, a serious mistake. So, bishop f6, rook f4, and now <laughs> the rook started to uh, go back to b4. Ter ter terrorize. Is, is it a word? Terrorize, yeah. Yeah. Black's position. Uh, so, uh, Rook d4, rook f4, rook b4, with every move white attacks something. And now the knight on g5 is hanging as well. So she played knight uh, h3, takes takes, rook b7, and bishop f4 still looks uh, at least fine for black. Oops. Uh oh. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't blundered. Yeah. Uh, rook c2, now some oopsie again is coming. Knight d2. Knight d2, right. Worst. Rook c1. And still looks absolutely fine for black, but then uh, something happened. Okay, so, so she lost the h7 pawn first. Okay, uh, now h3 uh, is falling. Yeah, now I mean it wasn't really falling with the queen on d7, but huh? apparently yeah. she just gave it up for the pawn on a5. Okay, and then uh, she decided to exchange the queens. Something that I'm not sure about at all. Yeah, because in the end game, White has an uh, active king, and uh, well, White is clearly having an advantage. I mean, winning? I don't know about winning. Like, if we manage to stabilize, it should be winning because it's just a healthy extra pawn, and d3, in fact, is a, it is also a dead is body. a weakness. Yeah, but the problem is b2 is hanging, and if king e3, I mean, first of all, we can take, and I'm not sure about this position because now. Uh, we have fast pawn and we don't have that weakness on d3 anymore. Yeah. Well, you know, just before. Well, before, yeah, I was going to say that before the problem is I probably played bishop to c3. And uh, if you go king e3, I just take and take one f3. Ah, and this is just a draw. You're tricky. Yeah, and uh, otherwise. But before was just played actually. So maybe she has something in mind. Maybe something like knight e4. Mm. Yeah, knight knight e4 comes to mind. And on d2, you just take the bishop and you control the promoting square, so it yes. all works. Yes. Nice. And if black takes first, uh, this I'm is just, just bad it. because d2, queen e2. Yeah, and now I actually just, just pick up this pawn. So I'm not sure how serious white's chances are, but uh, clearly Badelka misplayed it and uh, it's only white that can play for wing now. Yeah, I totally agree with you on this one. Yeah, so uh, this one, I think you covered it while I was gone, but I. I yeah, didn't... that was uh, pretty. That was uh, pretty. Uh, yeah, I remember that was pretty um, complicated in the beginning. Oh, well, let's see. Yeah, this, like, first white went uh, is super dynamic with f5, and then mm -hmm. black played b5. Wow. Yeah, this also uh, caught my attention. Right, right. B5 is a cool move. Then she gave up the exchange, but. Gained back the knight. Gained back the knight, and uh, now A5 is kind of. Well, this is a cool game, indeed. Queen F3, Bishop went back. Queen C3, I think. You know, this is uh, the type of position which we call a dynamic, uh, d dynamically equal position. Mm. Probably. At least, uh, no, if anyone can be better, I think it's white, but uh, a bishop pair and the, the, actually the situation here on the king side is very stable, so I'm not even sure if uh, white is better here, but bishop a2 is actually a very nice move, threatening queen b3, queen f6, and the queen, or maybe, maybe this was actually extremely strong, something that I didn't see at all. Bishop a2, uh, bishop a2 and queen b3 idea threatening yeah. the mate, yeah. Last time I, I left this position, I did say that this diagonal was extremely uh, strong for, for white. It was, yeah. And now we collected all the pawns. The king is weak now. 
So this should be technically winning for white, I think. And d5, yeah, b4, nice, nice, nice. Rook e7, crazy stuff. So if takes, I guess just takes on a7. Uh, and then uh, rook d8, we just take on c5, followed by c6. This is crushing. And uh, how many pounds, how many extra pounds? Uh, like six? All right, anyway, so rook e7, she played rook d8, rook g7, takes, takes, takes. Now a8, the queen wants to come to... The pawn wants to come to a8. So bishop f5. Um, a very nice trick, actually. Because now if white promotes, I think uh, rook takes, rook takes, and then uh, b3. And suddenly it's not that easy to stop this pawn. Uh -huh. Yeah, so... So it's an interesting idea. And so white played rook f7 first. Bishop to e4, now rook d7. Ooh, and you cannot capture that rook because there will be a8 You, you can uh, take the rook and uh, because yeah. of one trick, I, I can actually show you one trick here. I don't like this trick. <laughs> or, or let's say this one. <laughs> yeah, so... Very nice. But why will probably promote the a7 pawn? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Something tells me. I'm not sure what, but something tells me. Yeah, and this is obviously just a queen-up position. So she gave up the bishop on d6 and played king c5. Oh, totally lost. Mm, yeah, I mean, obviously it's totally lost. There are some tricks with the b pawn, but uh, yeah, we can see that Ekaterina, she, she knows that it's it's a lost position and uh, yeah. she probably won't, won't survive this. That's, uh, yeah, that could be a nice score for Pauline who has uh, white pieces, so mm -hmm. she would uh, eventually prove uh, the color. And uh, we shall see the result uh, very soon, but before that, let us take a quick break and be back shortly. We will be back, right? <laughs> Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable. Take control of your journey towards chess mastery.
So our guest this afternoon is uh, Grandmaster from Sweden, Pia Kramling. How are you doing, Pia? Mm, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so I saw you just finished your game with Monica Soko. Mm -hmm. uh, tough game, you were playing with Black. Mm -hmm. How did the game go? Could you take us through it a bit, please? Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't in the opening, I think it's just very, very equal the opening. But then after, it was, you know, it was very blocked the position. But afterwards, it was looking like she's maybe cheating something. But I think I kept in control. I, I thought it was, it, I, thought, I thought it was about level, yeah, I, I thought so. Almost all the time, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so tomorrow is the second game of the mini match. You'll play with the white pieces. Mm -hmm. How do you assess your chances for the game for tomorrow? Ah, I will okay make some decisions, and I will I will rest. I will enjoy being here too. But yes, just a very quiet day before the to to, to to rest and get prepared for the for the round for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, you were telling me before that this is your seventh uh, World Cup. That's mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's a record, but that must be one of the uh, top players in in number of World Cups. Mm, yeah, no, I played uh, I played lots of time. The first time was in Yekaterinburg, 2004, and I really like this. Um, uh, I like this format very much, but I was. I would wish that we had a tournament like this, you know, not once every second year, maybe once every three, four months. That it was kind of tournament like this with knockout because it's so, every time winning a match, it's like winning a whole tournament. And when you're going out, okay, it's sad. And then, you know, you have to wait two years. So that's why I wish it would have been to have this formula for other tournaments so we can play it more often because it's very, very attractive for the players. It's yep. very attractive for the public, of course, also. So it's, yeah, it's very, it's, it's just very nice. Well, these interviews appear on the Feeder channel, so hopefully they'll listen to you and, and who knows? Yes, hope so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the interview, Pia, and good luck tomorrow. Mm, thank you, thank you.
Welcome back to the round two of the FIDE Women's World Cup 2021. One Grandmaster Dina Belenka together with me, and Grandmaster Alexander Shimanov. Uh, and uh, we are back with the games. Uh, do we have more results uh, so far, Alexander? Yeah, I think uh, the favorite, Alexander Gresh, can officially finish her game. We knew that she was winning, but yeah, the queen uh, is coming to G2, so now it's official. And um, also, I think uh, we didn't mention that uh, Nana Zagnidza also won her game. We, we left it around here saying that, you know, White maybe has a decent position, but after knight c4, rook d3, h5, b3, yeah, I think uh, she should have uh, uh, kept the knight and played knight c5. Instead, she played, I mean, I'm sorry, instead of b3, probably knight c5 and uh, still a fight. I think White needs this knight here, but she, I think she missed rook to b2, and now f2 is weak as well, and... Uh, this is probably just the winning position now. C4 fell, and uh, too many weaknesses, extra pawn for the black, sorry, or for black pieces. Uh, Very so, nice attack in the middle of the board. Yeah, and the move A3 clearly tells us that something's wrong about the white's <laughs> position. And after F5, reason because of 4 is coming, so very convincing win by Nana. And I believe we more or less... Uh, Talked about every other game, uh, decisive game, uh, except this one maybe. We were saying that this was winning for White, and she just grabbed the pawn and beat him. I really like this move. In fact, you know, in my mind, uh, uh, I remember I was I was talking about knight three ideas. Uh, I was also going to suggest knight b three, and then that they five with the idea of taking on b seven, and I just didn't realize that white could take the pawn on b seven immediately. Very nice calculation skills so far. Yeah, but knight b seven just just wins the game, and uh, now this pawn is is uh, going to be a queen very very soon. That's right. what happened. Yeah. Next move is rook e eight, followed by very nice domination of knight and the rook versus a queen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, this this pawn is very very. Uh, strong and overall a very nice uh, win by Paulina and once again she showed that she's she's in uh, in the form in a great shape right mm -hmm. so uh, what else is there I think uh, we didn't talk about that game too much but apparently it was uh, I mean I was gonna say it was calm but it, it, I guess it wasn't. Yeah, no. And then queen c3, the bishop went back, f5, bishop f4, knight h2, wow, e takes. And then queen g3 was probably the idea. So white actually gets the knight back. And she played knight f3. And we got this end game, which turned out to be a draw. Like, uh, just uh, not enough material to do anything here, both sides. And uh, I think uh, Antonetta tried something, but you know, Black's counterplay is just uh, way too strong, so yeah, she had to sense. repeat the moves, and uh, it is a draw, so uh, yeah, I think uh, there are no no more results yet. I, I wouldn't say Gunin have won, won her game. Uh, that's something we think we expected, right? Although this position doesn't really look we too actually, bad. We actually, like, uh, yeah, our... I remember it was pretty decent after she found knight c3. It, I, I mean, it, it wasn't. It knight. wasn't bad, but um, uh, the pawns were falling apart. Right, right. The knight is actually much stronger than the bishop in this situation, and she managed to exchange the queens somehow, the rooks first, and then uh, the queens as well. At some point. Um, it, took, it took a long time to change the queens, but uh, it was actually white who were more or less forced to do that, but it turned out that this game is still still just lost because uh, because of this guy. Yeah. This is the first time we see a bad dark square bishop. True. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it was kind of easy for black. B4, A3, yeah. So... Yeah, I guess we could say a very, very nice uh, game by Vala, and uh, I'm surprised to see her that 
a low rated. She's only 2437. Yeah, well, she had a rough um, rough uh, season. She did uh, have some bad performances, but that doesn't mean much. You know, sometimes it's like weeks you you you, you do great and you a little bit slow down and you come back again. So Definitely, Vales' level is way stronger than her actual reading, and she will get back those points. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure she will. And unfortunately, she's unstable, right? She she may have a great tournament, but she may have a really yeah. bad one. And but if she's in a, in a, in a good shape, then she can go very very far. Yeah, she can beat anyone, and she can lose to anyone. But you know, interesting thing is that. Um, Many players in this tournament are like this. Okay, I... But Vala, it's true that Vala is uh, a um, more, let's say, um, a frequent example of that. Yes, exactly. And uh, But also, I think it should be mentioned that she's exceptionally strong in uh, in the faster time controls. Yeah, and please, do you remember she once won... Uh, what it, was it? London, uh, rapid. London, bl rapid or blitz? It was rapid, actually. It, yeah. Rapid being uh, uh, having a handicap on her right hand. She had her right hand operated, and uh, she was playing left hand, and she oh, won that blitz. That. And she won that blitz to, uh, rapid. You saying yeah. rapid tournament among men? Yeah, it was a uh, very very strong one. And yeah. I believe she scored nine out of ten. Yeah, that that was impressive, but especially being a right. Uh, uh, Handed, handed right. person, yeah, that was a very curious for her as well. So yeah, I remember I played here last year in the in one of the rapid tournaments, and I was really really <laughs> worried about the game. I managed to win it, but yeah, it wasn't wasn't easy at all. Yeah. So meanwhile, I think we have only four games left, as far as I can see. This is one of them. This is one of them, and uh, I see that the pawn H six is hanging, although. Nine of seven is possible, right? At the very least. At the very least, nine of seven is possible. Takes, takes, and this is an exchange of position. I'm actually not sure if it's winning at all because now we get to put nine on the five. D4 is kind of weak too. So, uh, not 100% sure that that's a win. Mm. And after rook a4, for example, we have some knight c3 ideas, which could be annoying. So, um, I'm not sure if that's the best for white, but that's like the plan B. And she just played bishop d3, which might be much stronger, in fact, because now we're threatening mating one. Mm, that is a very, um, very tricky thing of yours. Uh, I think we just witnessed yet another result between uh, Irina Gamponenka and uh, Maria, uh, Maria Muzichuk. What was that? Yeah, I was saying that black uh, should be much better, but apparently, I mean, it is the case for sure, but apparently uh, Maria uh, was in a hurry with B3 move because now uh, white can play rook D3 and uh, pick up this pawn and uh, now the rook comes to B7, so white gets uh, plenty of counterplay here, especially with this pawn on H7. And, uh, I still think that uh, it was it was very tricky, but apparently Nina managed to find a very curious uh, idea. Bishop to a6, and suddenly it looks like black can't avoid the perpetual. Wow, nice. Uh, Bishop a6. Bishop a6 is the key idea that she she probably saw from um, you know, like 10 moves ago or so, like from here, because otherwise it would be just uh, completely lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but bishop a6, and now suddenly there is no, no way to avoid the perpetual, and uh, yeah, this is what happened. Wow, nice. And, and actually, this pawn on g5 is very important because otherwise the king would run to f6. Do you actually think that Maria could have avoided this one and that was a blunder from her side? I think so, yeah. I mean, this position looks very, very promising, and uh, I think she just missed this, that idea. She thought that after rook h4 she was winning. So, a very nice save by Inna, and. Uh, yeah, now it uh, now she she will be black in the second game. Mm -hmm. Not easy for sure, but at least she, she survived the first one. Okay, so this game just finished. Uh, this one is probably going to be a long one, so we will come back to this game for sure. Yeah. My my feeling is that it should be a draw. 
And also, you said, uh, as you said to me during the break, your feeling is this might be the longest uh, game of, of today's round. Right, right, right. Because we only have three games left. Uh, Two games left. No. Olga Baderka just finished. Olga Baderka just finished in a draw. Uh -huh. in, no, but this was... Uh, I, I honestly really missed this game, so yeah. Uh, still three. Still three games left. Okay. And we were saying that this was... Uh, Kind of bad for black after knight e4. For some reason, she played knight b1, and then after king e3, bishop c1, a very precise move. At least we get to exchange the d3 pawn for f3 pawn. And uh, I s I'm still surprised that the game finished in like how many games? around 10 moves in a draw because looks like white can push forever here. Yeah. But I guess she missed a very, very nice idea uh, bishop to h5. Bishop to h5, and mm. looks like white can't actually avoid uh, the exchange of this bishop for this knight. Because now bishop g6 is coming. If we play knight c3, still bishop g6, and then bishop to b2. Mm -hmm. And if uh, knight d2, we obviously just take the knight. And otherwise, there is not much white can do. She just uh, took the bishop on c1. But this is uh, just a dead draw. This is just a dead draw. She pushed uh, her pawns, uh, but uh, that, that's all she could do here. Yeah. Do you think there was a chance for her to do it in a better way and to for for White to to convert the advantage? For sure. I think Bishop E3 was just a blunder, but not a you know, not not simple at all for Black to find Bishop H5. Um, after Knight C3, this is a long game, and I don't know if it's winning or not. Most likely, it's holdable for black, but not easy at all. So, uh, yeah, knight c3 would have been a better try. But what she did actually looks very, very natural. But this very, very important move, uh, bishop h5, uh, turned out to be you know, drawing the game immediately. So, yeah, this game is in the books. And then we have uh, this one. Uh, Hatanashvili uh, against Vaishali. Uh, we were saying that white was much better. You were dreaming of bringing the knight to f1, remember? Yeah, but no, no, no I changed my plans. I, I, I said for f4. Yeah. I, I, All right, f4. I listened to the expert. f4, and then uh, queen a6, king f1, queen came to d3. A very nice mm -hmm. idea, actually. Uh, queen takes b4, f4. So Vaishali, I mean, she clearly. She clearly knows what she's supposed to do in such positions because if she plays it slowly, she will just uh, yeah. uh, she will just be outplayed. In fact, she wants to sacrifice the bishop and make a, uh, and give a mate. Mm, yeah, After so F3, queen right. b7, king h6, queen takes. No, but in fact, it's made into. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh well, no, that's I a mean, check. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I didn't see that. It and then the check. mate. And uh, yeah, F3 or check first, and then F3. Yeah, this is. This is not something black will. Yeah, lose. just watch out for the for the perpetuals. Yeah, but I don't think what, I can avoid there it. There could be. No, I, mean, I, four. I don't think I can avoid it as black. The perpetual. Mm -hmm. Ah. And, right. and I mean, we should be fine with drawing this position. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, f four, a white took, bishop takes, king e one, bishop g five, queen to b five. Queen a3 and some, some tricky stuff. And uh, I have a feeling the problem for white is uh, the knight on e2. It's really hard to activate. Maybe we can dream of bringing it to g1, but that's all we can do. Yeah. And uh, if we push d5, then c5 is falling. The king is really, really weak. So uh, I think it should be should be a draw but uh, anything can happen i think it's still a three result game so uh, even black you know may win somehow let's say queen f3 followed by e3 and use mm -hmm. this may become dangerous for white yeah and this one what okay so an extra piece after bishop d3 black realized that let's say if she goes knight df6 then uh, she can't even uh Actually, black has no moves at all. If you look at the position, yeah, that is only true. You a5 cannot... is a possible idea. But that's gonna be a f... yeah. Right, the... right, right. Yeah, that's true. You cannot move a knight on f6 because there will be the mate. You cannot move knight on g. 
8 because it's protect the knight on f6 and you cannot move the king so uh, it's um game over it's a game over position and she decided to give up the the piece but this is not gonna last for a long time just an extra piece for white and uh very nice uh in fact rook g6 yeah is a very strong move as well uh pinning the knight and uh i think uh, karina will resign anytime soon mm. makes sense yeah we will be left with uh two games uh first one is this one and the second one is this one aha uh -huh. and the question is which game will last longer yes 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 uh here i think as, as i was saying this is probably a draw because the material is just too limited mm, and the king is not really safe but this can be played forever as well you know like i may try to bring my king to f1 and something like this around here nice uh, at, least, at least try to do something like that yeah and also if i get to play like um d 4 f4 f5 you know i can create some potential yeah. many threats against black's king so you know, I was saying it, it looks like a draw to me, but now I'm not sure anymore. Maybe it's actually lost. For black. Uh, yeah, definitely not for yeah. white. And, we just uh, had a move there. We just had a move right there. Queen e5 and black. Yeah, what did the queen's exchange? She played queen g6. Now, king f4 actually can be played. King h2 is fine as well. Mm, and um, yeah, we'll see. But I think this will be our longest game today. Mm. Right, then at least that we can get back to it later and see what happens in the other one. Yeah, I don't think we will see a lot of action here for the next like 10 moves or so. Uh, so this is the critical one, especially considering that players won't get any extra time on the clock, uh, only the, the increment and uh, in such sharp position the, the time is very, very important factor. Yeah, so we do have this past pawns, uh, the D pawn actually is the past pawn and uh how high are the chances of white to win this one as i said i don't think too high because uh, h3 is weak a4 is potentially weak as well um and the knight is just really really stupid here so and the king is weak as well so uh, i think having the extra pawn more or less secures white from losing the game but uh winning it will be very very hard Makes sense. Yeah, so... Yeah. All right. Um, let us try to, to predict what, ha what can happen here. Queen G4 makes sense to me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I would... Uh, I take the pawn on A4, you will take the pawn on E4. Right, and, and that will be actually a winning position for, for me, I think, because uh -huh. now... Uh, the king will be much safer since e4 pawn is actually kind of annoying. Then b7 is weak. Uh, the knight can jump to f4, creating some ideas against uh, the pawn on g6. So, uh, no, I don't think we can give up this pawn on e4. Mm. Okay, queen g4 sounds annoying. Let us make this move. Yeah, maybe I can play knight to, I'm sorry, queen to f3. Oh, really? Because the queen's so exchanged, the now the knight is attacked, and oh, if it goes yeah, you're anywhere, the pawn. I win the pawn, and maybe you... I win the second one. Yeah, as this well. is no no problem for for white oh, for black. That is still an extra pawn, so I'm not hundred percent sure that this is like super trivial, but should be a draw, of course. Yeah, also, and she just played queen g4. Bella has only one minute, so I think we will see some action here, mm -hmm. some yeah. changes. Either she will be able to convert or. Or not okay uh four minutes for Vershine. that is the second time trouble already yes 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 so they won't get any extra time and uh yeah everything will be decided here how about bishop takes uh d4 well we lose the h4 and then we lose the e4 as well yeah i see your idea that yeah. you want to play queen a1 check and this this is obviously nice, but I don't I don't think we can afford yeah. giving up the h4 pawn. Can we play? Okay, we need to defend then the pawn, right? So how about queen uh, d3? Queen d3 makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what should be played a lot. Even Maybe we also attack d4. You know, uh, we should watch out for some stuff like queen g6. Oh, nice. Yeah, not not here because the knight is pinned, but after ah. king g2. 
that yeah. could be a blunder. That could be a blunder. Sometimes it happens like yeah, this. Well, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You think that you have this nice uh, trick, but in fact, you cannot move your knight. Actually, you know, the more the more I look, I'm looking at it, uh, the more I like white's chances because, uh, yeah, this queen g4 is a very nice consolidating move. Mm -hmm. And we attack the key pawn on e4, mm, king g2, and then knight f4. And this actually will be a very like, safe construction for uh, for for white. So yeah, I, I was thinking that the main problem is uh, is the knight on e2, and it is, but it's actually possible to activate it via f4. Yeah. All right. So um, losing, totally losing. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> not totally losing for sure, but I think. Uh, White has some chances, more chances than I thought a couple of minutes ago. Wait, what was the move that you said after Queen D3? What was your suggestion? Back in G2. Uh huh. Asking you what's the next move, and she just played Queen F3, and I think this is the right idea. That this is the move I also suggested. Yeah. The point is uh, now you don't have King G2, so you still can't really, you know, put the king on the on the right squares. But she just plays D5. Also, also makes sense. Like why not, right? If we allow to get the pawn to d7, this should be a serious achievement for white. So yeah, maybe true. maybe white is just winning, you know, the more I'm thinking about it. And now we're actually threatening to take on f3 and then just play king g, knight g1. And, and then? And then pick up the pawn on f3. Uh -huh. So, and then play c6 or whatever. So, uh, she just goes uh, queen to h1, knight g1 has to be played, I think. And now the question is, what's next? Because now I actually want to go Queen G2 probably, and uh, yeah, not probably, but Queen G2 will be winning for white for sure. And in fact, I don't really see Black's next one. Maybe E3 is the move, yeah, for sure. That's her idea because then D5 is hanging. All right. Yeah. So this is the last chance, and uh, yeah, it has to be played. It has to be played. Uh, maybe some checks. Look, queen of three, maybe. Yeah, queen of three actually looks winning because I hit the bishop as well, as well as the queen. Mm -hmm. And if you go for some tricks like e2 check, for example, uh, I probably take with the king and then I take on f6, and this uh, queen's endgame is probably just winning. So, queen of three, I think, is the simplest right now. Nice. If she If she finds this move, she will win the game. I think Bella has um, has recently given the birth to her second child, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, we'll check. Yeah, I'm later. not really following that, yeah. that topic. <laughs> no, it's just as I'm, um, yeah, background information about our players. But Queen our... F3 has been played, and this is this looks like a game over to me because you know E2 is the only chance. Uh, and then, uh, as, as I was saying, uh, queen takes f6. This is a completely winning endgame for white. The pawn is running, h4 is hanging too, and this is just, uh, in fact, it's two pawns up for white. So, not much to talk about. And uh, so, very well handled by Bella. I think Vaishali could have. Uh, um, could have could have found something better than than what she did, but still, apparently, it was much more dangerous for Black than I originally thought. Mm, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so Queen F3 is is, is a killer. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are things uh, going on for Anna Musichuk and Tadev? Uh, was there some improvement in that game? Uh, let's take a look. Mm, not much, although White managed to activate her king. Oh, she did listen to your plan. She, uh, yeah. I mean, this is kind of an obvious plan, and I think uh, she will, she will win this game. You know, because it's it's much simpler for White to play. You just like, bring the king closer, and then something happens. Mm -hmm. Also, d five is really weak. Yeah, that, uh, so, that's true. Yeah. Also, I remember this rule: whenever your knight is close to your king, you will never have a perpetual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the knight is a very very. A uh, good defender against, uh, specifically against the queen. For some reason, I don't really know how logically explain it, but uh, yeah, that's the case. And uh, 
besides being a great defender, combined with the queen, it's a great attacking uh, weapon as well, right? Yeah, 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 it makes uh, good sense. So, yeah, I think Anna will will win this game and Bella will win this game too. Mm -hmm. So we are expecting two wins from the two, la from the two remaining games for us. Yeah, I think I think uh, in this game we won't see any any surprises. This game still may be not so simple for for White, but in the end of the day, I think it is winning. Queen of Queen E five now maybe. Yeah, Queen E five, and then we're, uh, Queen F seven. You have to do, but then the King E three. And King E three. Queen F five. Maybe even not if I G six, yeah. G six, yeah. Knight F five isn't isn't going anywhere. We can play it at any point. Also yeah. knight e six. Mm. So uh, yeah. There's no need to rush for white, I think. Yeah. So seems like Anna is uh having it under control. Which is good for her. She's a favorite here, and she should be yeah, should be winning this game uh, if she claims her rights for for the crown. Right. Well, this oh, well we can add like uh, as you said already in the beginning. Um, this particular tournament used to be a a, um, a world championship mm -hmm. in the elimination knockout system, but uh, recently uh, many uh, female. Chess players have uh, been um, have been asking for for changes and uh, changes. And they they were heard. So right now the system is exactly the same as for men. So now it's a World Cup, and um, the first two spots I believe uh, only give uh, a place in the candidates tournament. Right. So by winning this tournament, you will get a place in the candidate uh, in the candidates tournament, and uh, it's in the candidates tournament that will be fighting. They will be fighting for a chance to challenge the world champion Jumin Jun. Yeah, and uh, unless uh, Gareshkina wins the whole thing, because I think she already won the candidates tournament. As far as I remember, yeah. Well, Garashkina, as well as uh, yeah, Garashkina has already the the opportunity to. She's already in the candidate room. So in fact, she plays here just like Magnus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she doesn't fight for 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 a qualification or anything like that. She just uh, plays chess here. But she will not become uh, a champion, uh, world champion, if she wins this one. She will still need to play the next candidates in order to challenge Juvin Jun because she lost the match in uh, in January twenty twenty. Do you know what this game reminds me? I do know what this game reminds you, and I actually saw the messages on our chat, and I, w I didn't refer immediately to that because we how we forgot about this game. I mean, we thought it was over, so that yeah. was a... we didn't cover it. But in fact, yeah, there was this amazing story, resignation. <laughs> amazing so it doesn't remind story. Yeah, there was this amazing story. I think we can bring it up. Yeah. So. Uh, Ukraine the, 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 the was the uh, was the current world champion, mm -hmm. reigning world champion, I should say, and uh, she played against Olga Giri, as far as I remember, right? Yeah, that's correct. And they got this end game knight and bishop versus nothing <laughs> versus the king. Yeah. And uh, the world champion uh, didn't really know how to deliver checkmate. Yeah, well, did she know or not? In any case, she didn't succeed. Well, I think if you know how to do that, you... Yeah, but just leave for her chance to have some excuse for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, as an excuse, I've seen 2,700 GMs not delivering a checkmate in, uh, in the Blizzard games. Oh, right. So this is uh, <laughs> not us making fun of her or anything. It's yeah. just, uh, um, it just uh, you know... Uh, Something that uh, this yeah, position nice reminded story. us. Yeah, uh, nice story. And that uh, story. Yeah, our viewers also mentioned that in the chat. So, yeah, that is true. There was this uh, connection. Yeah, so but un unfortunately for Karina, she can't even get this position because if she plays knight a7, we play bishop d7 and the knight is completely cut off. Yeah, so, so it didn't uh, work out for her. Yeah, she was hoping to you know, get the same position again, but uh, not this time. All right, so officially we have uh, 
Two Wait, only. Wait, two or one? Uh, Bella, Bella just won her game. Oh, nice. Bella just won her game. That, that was very fast. Well, I mean, the position is totally winning. Just push the pawn, so there's nothing black can do. No, yeah. uh, no perpetual ideas. So, very nice win by her. And she is a favorite of this, uh, of this uh, match. So, we're not too surprised, right, to see okay. her winning this game. So, officially only one game left. Nice, and this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a long game. Oh, I hope. Uh, you hope so. <laughs> yeah. You hope so. I, I hope it will be long. Yes, so yeah. we, can, we can spend more time here. Yeah, absolutely. Let us enjoy the position. So, what can we say about it? There is this knight on d4. It is pinned, but um, but 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 it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Queen e5 makes sense now. Yeah, but somehow for now, White did not improve since the last time we left this game. I think she just wants to be really careful, you know, in terms of not letting any counterplay for Black. So, uh, and that's a perfectly fine strategy in such positions. You can just move back and forth, see, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how, how thing, things are growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe your opponent will blunder something. At some point, she will go King f5 and King e6. But she just wants to make sure you know, the time is right. Mm -hmm. Or F4, F5, maybe, stuff like that. Oh, this position must be lost now. I'm looking at it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, most likely, you know, if the pawn gets to F6, F5, um, then uh, there are all kind of uh, mating ideas. In fact, uh, you know, the, even if the pawn gets to F6, black gets to take, and we get just. Uh, you know, uh, queen and uh, knight versus queen position mm -hmm. with such king. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still not sure if it's an easy, easy draw for black, but this won't happen for sure. Yes, that is true. That is true. King h7, so it's time to play f4, I think. Time to play f4. I don't see anything wrong with that move. All right. In fact, a fourth threatens ninety six winning the game on the spot. Uh huh. Yeah, that is nice. All right. So um, I'm trying to think about the fortress for black, or I don't know, like stalemate as we <laughs> from the yesterday's inspiration. Well, uh, I don't think those kind of ideas exist in this position. It's just uh, you know, if white exchanges the queens in, at the wrong moment and then we get the exchange to last pawn, this could be the chance, but you know, Mozicek is just too experienced. I don't think she will allow that. Yeah, also, we didn't mention, Anna is well known to have her amazing endgame technique. She is known to be very, very solid and especially one of the strongest female players in the endgames. Mm, very likely so. Um, um, Mm, not really familiar with your strength and, and game <laughs> strength, strengths, yeah, but I'm, I'm not surprised at all. I've, I know that she's very, very strong. Yeah, and she's one of only five or six girls who ever managed to uh, to pass the, to to enter the 26 club. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was five before Gareshkin joined yeah, it as well. It so now six. it's six. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so uh, Queen F4 now, we do not have a pin anymore, so we need to bring the king. You know what? It would be funny if uh, White blundered the mate in the middle of the board, somewhere like Queen G6. No, but it's, oh, it's not. Yeah, there's always, always E5 oh, There's square. always something like, you put the pawn on H5 and the queen on a, uh, king on F5 and queen on F6. Okay. <laughs> Well, maybe you should compose some studies like that, but <laughs> yeah, in real I'm pretty life... sure in the in the in the next two weeks we'll have a lot of opportunities for that. Yeah, for sure. But I, I'm I'm still surprised she didn't play f4 because I don't really see anything wrong with moving that pawn. Maybe she just wants to play king f5 and king e5 and pick up the pawn that way. Yeah. In fact, you know, queen f1. It looks um, aggressive, but it's. Uh, how we call call it yesterday, like a fake aggression, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> a fake, 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 fake news here. Queen of one. But we see that Anna is, you know, she's still very focused and not relaxed. 
at all. Yeah. And I guess that's too early to be relaxed. Yeah. There's, there's some True, definitely. still some technique needed. Definitely. We both know by uh, our, as we say, our fur, uh, how sometimes it can be a wrong feeling of like you already have the the easy win, but in fact uh, it's an easy draw. Right. I mean, this is not the case, but I don't like what she's doing. She's probably. Uh, I mean, she she was touching her king the way she she wanted to put it back, but okay, she ended up playing uh, king f5, and this is, I think, the right move. Yeah. Now we just want to play king f5, and and then then take bottom. the yeah. That's that is not the first time I see uh, this amazing plan in the queen's endgame. Activating your king actually is super strong because one queen only cannot checkmate, and uh, in fact king becomes stronger than the queen because eventually he attacks the pawn and whenever queen tries to check the king then the king grabs the pawn and that is um, an achievement for for the one who... Yeah, but I think the logic the here is simple that black has a queen and a king in the game and if we keep our king on h2 white just has a queen on the knight in the game so it it's basically an even situation but once we bring the king uh, in the game uh, now white is just a uh, piece up in the game not 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 just a piece up on the board but in the game as well yeah. while well, uh, black play queen e1 stopping king e5 and this is a good move i think and queen to e3 okay yeah this is a good move as well now the queen has to move the next move is king e5 so we will pick up that pawn yeah and uh after that it should be more or less trivial i think Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, something happened in the in the <laughs> in in the boys tournament in the open section. Uh, anyways, so there is this king on f five, and it is active. Now, what are we doing next? The king will come to e5. The pawn will be taken, and there will mm -hmm. be passed pawn. I feel like uh, it's gonna be a resignation soon. It's gonna be. It's, I feel like it's not gonna be as long as you uh, you were hoping it would be. <laughs> well, I'm still hoping it will be very very long, but uh, um, and I think it won't be that quick as you think it will, because yeah, we will lose the d5 pawn, but the d5 pawn, you know. Um, as a defender, you don't think about this pawn as the key defensive yes. resource, right? So, yeah, king e5, queen b1, king e5. Now the pawn will be captured. And uh, in fact, I don't, I'm not sure right now if we need this pawn at all. Mm -hmm. the, the point is, you know, sometimes we can hide behind this pawn if, if there are some kind of you know, perpetual ideas and stuff like that. You should just play queen a2 hoping to save this pawn but i think it's time to go for the mate yeah like queen d3 and then maybe queen g5 and 96. so the pawn can, can be protected anyways and the queen is now actually very far away from the from the king side so i i won't be surprised if um you know some mating ideas exist in this position already mm -hmm. Made the ideas for, for Black King. Yeah, Queen F5, maybe 96, Queen G6, stuff like that. Mm -hmm, nice. And then the King may actually come to E7, let's say, be covered by the Knight on E6 and uh, participate in the mating attack as well. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Just play Queen F3. Yeah, okay, that's a good move. That's a good move, and uh, I'm waiting for. For black to, to come up with something, but there is not such an easy thing to come up. How about we activate our pawns if we push the age pawn? Well, this is uh, yeah. something white is hoping for. Mm -hmm. That so, you you will yeah. activate your pawns and you will lose them quickly. And this is actually a very, you know, relatively famous story, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So David Bronstein was asked once, like, uh, David, how you how did you manage to save that? bad position. He was, his answer was, uh, you know, I didn't try to make it worse, but what's more important, I didn't try to improve it. 
<laughs> because uh, you know this way you're trying to improve your position but in fact you, it just uh, leads to basically an wow, immediate loss what, what a nice quote i really like it wow in this case uh um in this case black should just stand uh, on the same place yeah and shouldn't. wait for for white to come and knock in their door and with a knife <laughs> with a knife yeah <laughs> King is six. Let's go. She's going for some mating stuff. Well, I'm not sure what is it going to f7. I think the knight had to be placed on e6 in order to create some mating ideas. Mm. But she can always come back, obviously. So that's a that's a big uh, advantage of White's position that she can try whatever, and if it doesn't work, she can always come back. And last time I needed left for both players, but now it's much harder for for Black to play because uh, clearly she doesn't want to lose this pawn on uh, on d5, and um, this is not something Black should be fighting for. Mm, definitely. So King h7. I think the check is coming. Well, yeah, to check. Yeah, did happen on the did game happen. as we see right now on the board. Yeah, now she will probably play king h8. And um, king f7, maybe now. I mean, the problem on oh, king f7 is actually, I was going to say it's a blunder. It, no, even king f7 isn't a blunder because of the queen a7, king g6, you can't take the knight because of queen nice. f8. Nice. So he's and otherwise again. I go 96, and this is mm -hmm. definitely winning for White immediately. Yeah, that was such a great plan suggested by you from the early beginning. We saw this position just go out, bring your king to the uh, to the opponent's camp, and that's gonna be a win. Well, that's what I was saying because if you don't bring the king, uh, you know we we have two two pieces versus two, and but this way you yeah. have three versus two. So makes sense. This must be winning. King h8, and now let's see if she plays. King f7, definitely not the only move in the position. I still don't really see what's wrong with f4, because now I don't think ideas like g5 work. So just play king d6. Not, not too happy about this move, because she will probably come back with the king at some point. Also, I'm wondering how many moves have there been without any pawn push? Mm, not That's that not, many, no, no. I think. Yeah, let's, no, no. let's see, but... Okay, so move 42, Capture. takes b4, and now, now it's move 65, so 23 moves so far. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah not enough. Yeah. And now black has to move the queen, actually, because of king g8, we just take on d5. Queen a6 happened, so finally... Uh, Finally, we will grab the pawn on d5. I don't mm -hmm. see anything wrong with king takes d5. Although, again, I'm not even sure if we need this pawn because it needs to be, you know, it doesn't need to be, but we can use it as a as a, as a shield for, for our king. But Yeah, it's wrecking the mate, but yet no, uh, and I did grab this pawn. At least there's going to be no uh, 50 moves uh, rule, rule yeah. anymore because there is a capture and... Uh, only one pawn now left uh, for black for a knight. Right. Uh, yeah, but now I don't like the fact that you know there's uh, plenty of checks for for black, like king e5, king c7, and but so on. be sad. The knight is close. So. Yeah, it's not like there's going to be any perpetual, but it yeah. may be not that simple for for mm -hmm. white to penetrate with the king. Yeah. So where would the king go? Uh, king e5 just to happen in the game. Yeah, king e5, queen c7. Now the queen will go back to e4, I think. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you can win this position without uh, pushing the pawn. Mm. So this mm -hmm. will will happen at some point. Queen b7 should. Uh... Queen b7, king e7. That, it doesn't really matter what exact move mm -hmm. will be played. It's all about uh, general concepts here. Yeah. Queen e7. Now she will probably play queen e5, I think. Queen e6 also makes sense. So, uh, yeah. 
She just played king to f3. All right. But how is she going to win? Win, yeah. She needs either the king or, or the pawn works now as well, I think. So the f3 square is probably the worst one in that sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you would uh, better keep the king in the center, put the pawn on f4, and try to use your knight to defend from the checks. Mm -hmm. All right, I see your point. Something like king g3, f4, and then the knight may come to e5, and then g6. But uh, white won't be able to win this uh, game without the help of the king or, or the pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Queen b7 check happened on the board now. King g4, maybe. Oh, king g3. King g3. Yeah, king g4, actually. Queen g2. Yeah, not a pleasant one. I do agree. Oh, there's king h5 still. King h5, king queen h2, king g6, <laughs> and queen f7, and making through your plan. No? no Where no, are you laughing? I'm laughing because that is uh, exactly what black is hoping for. Because stalemate? Nope. G6 and then Queen oh, H wins. <laughs> wow. So we finally found out. What a swindler. <laughs> I, yeah, you see, I uh, there there is a possibility still. Thing I was hoping for. Yeah. But it was really hard to come up with some line where yeah. Black actually wins, but yeah, <laughs> we managed to. Meanwhile, this is the position and uh I think she will play king g2 and then bring the knight to f3. I think this is what, what will happen. The knight has not much to do on d4 anymore because it needed to be, mm. to be there to, to stop the d4 pawn. But now there's no pawn anymore. Just play queen f4 also makes sense. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it, was it... Oh, like let's imagine was it a blitz game especially a, a tiebreak blitz game i i think uh, chances of black uh, swindling and even winning this one would be really high well that's something we talked about yesterday but yeah. again i think it's just much easier for white to win here yeah when, yeah, yeah. when uh, there's no time because <laughs> i mean this this kind of trick happens, you know, once once in a thousand games maybe. Yeah, and, and that uh, happened to be in the games on Nurgul Salimo twice a day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe a little bit more yeah. more often, but um, here, unfortunately, I I don't think Anna sees the the plan yet. I mean, she will find it because. It's not really possible to not to find the yeah, right Yeah, because plan. she won't have any choice. Mm -hmm. But when fighting for win, yeah, she won't have any choice. I mean, it looks like she wants to win without using her her pawn or her king. But as I was saying, I don't think it's actually actually possible. True. 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 So, uh, what can we say about this one? Um, yeah, you were right. Game is taking uh, some time. Uh -huh. And uh, it won't be <laughs> as quick as some people hope. <laughs> definitely not us. Yeah, but definitely not us. Yeah. And uh, I think 95 will be played. All right. Spreading some. But still, not pressing yeah. much. Some checks, yeah, but that's it. A couple of checks, let's say. Yeah. Mm. But she does need to put her pawn in F4, doesn't she? Yeah, that's what I've, I've been saying, that uh, without the pawn you can't really win this game. So, But that's apparently that she doesn't want to do at all. Yeah, I think she's worried that uh, there would be g5 and some accidental pawn exchange. And in that case, the position would become drawish. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually hoping to see the queen and uh, knight versus queen position. But this is drawish. It is a draw, but I've seen people winning it. Wow, nice. Yeah, I had it once. Like, I had a winning endgame with um, a knight and the queen. And my opponent had like a queen and some pawns, but I also had like, I think I had one or two pawns, and she had maybe uh, three or four. And it was totally winning, but I blundered like, the exchange of all the pawns, and then I couldn't win. 
Yeah, but I, I see the point. You're saying it's like Rook and a Knight versus Rook, and you also saw people winning it. Yeah, I mean, Rook and, and a Knight versus Rook. Oh, yeah. Or the Bishop. Yeah, Rook and a Knight versus Rook, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's something I I want against correct, actually. In the Blitz. In, in, the, in the World Blitz. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in, 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 in the, over the board. Wow, yeah. congratulations. You mm -hmm. see, uh, uh, it's just, okay, maybe Paulina Schwal is uh, too strong for you, but definitely not... Uh, not Sergey. Yeah. Not Sergey Karakin. Yeah. So and, and the Rook and Bishop versus Rook, I see people winning all the time. So uh, this is not a not something you know outrageous. So um, here it's time to move the pawn. I mean, maybe yeah. she will. I think she will try Queen E4, hoping for some little tricks with Knight G6. Mm, now be careful not to play. Uh... Yeah, she did play King H2 because otherwise there will be G5. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to be also um, pretty exhausting for players because they have been playing for like having one minute on the clock for about uh, a, like already 20 minutes at least. Yeah, but at the same time, this is not the most uh, complicated position ever. So yeah, true. You can just play King G if you really want to gain some time you can just play king g2 king f1 king e2 and stuff like that mm -hmm. but this time i actually if she i mean if she doesn't want to move the f pawn she will have to deal with this um, 15 moves rule right yeah but that, that since the 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 capture on d5 was not such a long time ago it's gonna be uh, mm, yeah. uh from well, starting from scratches let's see i think she will wait for 49 minutes uh, moves and then play f3 and then now 49 moves and f4 and finally she will be forced to put the pawn on the right spot right right right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah interesting oh king g8 that is hello the best, in queen c4 no way do you think it's a blunder i think it is i think it is oh boy I think it is, and uh, this makes uh, Anna's task much easier because this end game must be winning. Mm. At least, at least that's what uh, you know both players think because one was offering a draw, uh, a queen's exchange all the time, mm -hmm. and the second one was declining that. Mm -hmm. And now uh, White can play queen c4. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm wondering if they do think so, but, uh, like if Anne. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so now at least. Unfortunately, that game won't, long for, won't last for that long, so it's either a win or a draw. Uh, there is no, you know, uh, big... Uh, yeah, no chance for swiveling, chances, so yeah. it makes the things easier for Anna, in a way, makes things easier. Yeah, I mean, it should be winning, I think. I don't really expect Black's, uh, Black to exchange the, the pawns here. Mm -hmm. King F7. King G3, probably. And... King F6, and now... Knight A3 or King F4, the moves don't really matter that much. All right. So, pawns will advance... Um, well, and when... Are we are we one hundred percent sure that Tara uh, uh, would she see that she she'd never do it? I am because she was avoiding the queen's exchange all the time, and I don't think she suddenly realized that this is a draw. Hmm. Yeah, I see your point. I see your point. All right. Uh, I actually think I genuinely think this is the last uh, uh, game of all of all the um, World Cup. Tournaments like of both of open section of uh, women. All two of them. <laughs> <laughs> both of them. Yeah. yeah, you got my my point. Well, that's probably the case. So. Um, yeah. But this I this, think this end game should be trivially winning. I think. Yeah. There are no you know big nuances and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, that definitely definitely blunder that. Mm, that's a pity because, like, it, Anna did not. Yeah, like, what, what, what would that have uh, be worried of uh, when playing King G eight? Yeah, she was worried about Knight G six, obviously. And uh, was that a 
threat? Yeah, well, well, I mean, uh, of course that was a threat, but was there a better way to stop it? I removed the queen and you were like f6, let's say. Queen f6? Yeah. Uh, but wait, oh, knight, wait. knight g6? Knight, uh, now this is actually... And mate? Queen, queen, g, queen, queen e8? Seven. Oh, but now knight e7, right? Yeah. And queen a1. And queen a, but we're queen forced to play, to play g6 here. Oh, and now Which there is, is uh, queen d7. Yeah. yeah, probably that's not what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not queen to f6, but let's cover the back crank. And oh, court. you can just pin the knights. Queen d6. One of the options. And then there would sure. be a four, but I'm not sure because Anna has take, has been taking so much time Actually, to push that pawn. not that easy, right? So I was going to play queen c8, but then knight g6 again. And then, okay, queen d6 is probably the right move. Mm -hmm. But besides that, the, the apparently there are not that many... Good moves for black. Yeah. Maybe queen a6 holds as well. But okay, this, mm -hmm. this wasn't that trivial. So uh, this is the position we have right now. She should bring the knight, and that's what she just did. Mm -hmm. uh, knight g4, I think, and then king e5 is the idea. Yeah. And. Uh, black will probably play h5, I think. And then. Uh, Knight d5, king e6, so it's still not winning immediately. Right. But it should be winning, of course. Yeah. So I think she's she's trying to keep the pawns here, but if we get uh, as wide, if we get to activate the king, um, you know, the, there won't be any any anything interesting. So I think she should stop this. Uh, Knight g4 idea now. Yeah. And g5 is also possible. Yeah, and that's g5 was played. played. Now I think king will go to e4. Yeah, because yeah. if king g g4 if and king g6. Yeah, true. Now h5, we can play with. Uh, we can, but the thing is, like, I'm actually waiting for you to push all yeah, the pawns. Yeah, it's like, the... again, with that uh, rule of uh, Bronstein. Mm -hmm. You actually, like, here, the problem of black will be that uh, he will be running out of moves eventually. He will find himself in the situation of Zugzwang. Yes, yes, that's the case. Yeah. Uh, she really doesn't want to push the pawn here, but uh, I guess she just doesn't really have a choice. For example, king e6 loses immediately to knight f5. Ah, and after h5, there is this amazing double attack. Mm -hmm. Knight g7, boom, attacking the king and the pawn on h5 at the same time. Yeah, so h5... Uh, has been played and now uh, I guess any move again because we just uh, basically need to push our king forward and this should be uh, this will force black to to move the pawns and this way for example like king d5 maybe is winning although g4 now I'm a little bit con con Confused. concerned Concerned so, about, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, king g5, uh, sorry, king e4, king g5, and now. And now actually, h4, g3 bit. is yeah. coming. Uh, this is not what we want to do for sure. We want to have this option of playing. Uh, Although, playing you king know, um, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, something like knight f1, mm -hmm. for example, makes sense because if we, after g4, we play king f4. This is definitely losing. Yeah. And after h, for example, knight f1 right now, yeah. So if king e6, we play knight g3 and we provoke the pawn. Okay. Although h4, knight f1, now g4 again. But you know what? I will beat your. I will eat your pawns. I will beat them. Or I will eat them. No, oh. I will not. No. Ooh, that's not funny. Oh. All right. A stupid knight question. Knight e3, knight e3, knight e3. Okay, here yes. Is, is or this knight winning? I, I have no idea. I don't know how to even know this pawn and games. What, what, what? What's the problem? Hmm? What's the problem here? It's winning. It is okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> What's right, the problem? So she just played that. No, 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 wait. It, it, also, mm -hmm. instead of king f4, you had knight e3. Instead of king f4, but then g3 I had knight e3, g3, and yes. push and push f4. But push four. h3. Who's and winning king, here? king, king, king f3. Uh, uh huh. No. So I go here. Maybe and then not. I go here. Ooh. This this may be a draw. Five. Because if you move mm -hmm. the knight, I'd play king of five. I think this is just a draw. Okay, then in that case, it's just your line with knight takes g3. 
was working enough. I, I hope so. Yeah. What was the problem? What was well, your problem there? Because I mean, I see that there's only one problem. Yeah, but your king is in front. You know, this is the basic rule that you learn when you first right, on the first right. lesson. I, I, I forgot you my first lesson. You take it with the king. You take yes. not do not take it with a pawn. Just take it with the king. king that's winning. Five? Yeah, and king, king f three okay. opposition. Right. This is the first word you learn when you go to any. Uh, um, Russian chess school. I, I think we went to the same chess school, but uh, <laughs> you remember, you still remember the lessons. And yeah, I that's don't. because you, you you left that school too early. I guess so. But yeah. I stayed there all my life, and I'm still there. So <laughs> that's the that's the reason why I know the opposition rule better than you. So you're still learning the opposition in that school? <laughs> 15, <laughs> 15 years later? Yeah, well, we're, you know, checking, checking the stuff. It's actually repassing, reviewing is uh, the best um, way to to learn to study mm -hmm. that is the the general rule yeah, well, um, no kidding yeah i agree yeah right. Knight of one was played so we may see my my line actually uh-huh and um okay so black is um running out of moves yeah we just saw that line and uh, let's see if uh if uh, Anna is that confident as, as you are about that phone line game. <laughs> yeah, let's see that. Uh, that is it. Yeah, that is it. Okay, so um, 52 seconds only for Tadev to decide uh, what to do here, knowing that his situation is uh, bad. But, yeah, and uh, King E6 is uh, strictly the only move here. But she's a fighter. King G6 and uh, but King G6 now it's very simple because I just play King E5 and if G4 I go King F4 if H4 I play Knight H2. Oh, uh, King G King takes G4. I'm sorry. Uh yeah, here okay here H4 yeah you're right you're yeah, right you're right yeah, you're right yeah. you're definitely right. All right, so um, shall we speak about our sponsors uh, now that we have time before uh, the result is already more or less expected? Right, we should thank our sponsors again and uh, the general partners um, are Gazprom, uh, which is a global energy company and uh, its mission is to ensure a reliable, efficient and balanced supply of natural gas and other energy resources as well. And um, uh, the second general partner is Narnikil, uh, who is, which is a leading Russian metals and mining company and the world largest producer of high grade nickel and palladium. And the company also supplies the growing demand of, for metals essentials for the production of goods capable of significantly improve uh, the quality of people's lives and ensure the transition to a low carbon and energy efficient economy and uh, as we already mentioned in the beginning of this broadcast uh, without the sponsors it would not be possible to uh, bring up together such a big event both a feeder open world cup and women's world cup are played together for the first time in the history also the number of players have almost doubled and well maybe not doubled but has been uh, um has increased uh, dramatically and uh, as well as all the other sponsors that you can see behind us in our broadcast as well so Big shout out to them. And now I guess we can get back to the position uh, because there have been some moves here so far. Have been some moves, but so tell me, Dina, does Knight XG4 win now? Yes, because your king and your pawn are with one square um, between them. So you will also have, you will always have an extra temp even if you put me under I will always have right. even if I put you in under our position nice I'm learning right now but I would never play this in the real game I would definitely play 9g2 here to make sure you know I don't have to blunder anything but yeah she knows her here stuff we go. Like me, so. uh, yeah we Anna and me we know better and, and, and that, games that if knows it yeah. as well because yeah. she resigns immediately so uh, yeah the last game, uh, it took 82 moves to Korn and Mozichuk to to beat Tadif Abrahamel from uh, from the states. Uh, what's the summary here for for, for this round? You know? Let us try to remember. For so far, we have seen uh, um, 
not so many surprises. So uh, if we look at the at the leaders by rating, we had uh, Jansai Abdulmalik uh, who lost to a lower rated opponent. Um, what, were there some other? We had a lot of draws. That is true. Um, were there some other surprises? I don't think so. I mean, the loss of Zansai is not that huge of a surprise. Maybe Sari is very strong, so... Yeah, but uh, at looking at the paper, they do have uh, 100... Oh, actually, they have 115 points different, 16 point difference. Yeah, that is something that yeah. is serious, of course, but I think uh, BB Sari is just uh, seriously underrated. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So, uh, either way... Um, that was uh, our first game of the round two. Tomorrow we'll be back with the second game of the round two. And uh, yeah, we will already have some names tomorrow of those who will advance to the round three. And some of them will have to fight back on the tie break. But that will be another story. So as far as for today, me, one Grandmaster Dina Belinka and Grandmaster Alexander Shimana. We were having a lot of pleasure being with you here today, and we are hoping to see you back tomorrow, same time, same place. Stay tuned. So our guest this afternoon is uh, Harika Dronavali from India, Grandmaster 2515. How did your first game go this afternoon? Uh, it went well. Uh, I won uh, uh, with white pieces with Medina. Uh, it was pretty complicated in between now uh, because I thought I was better, but it wasn't easy to uh, see direct forced uh, positions. Then I complicated a little bit. I don't know exactly what's the evaluation of computer, but over the board, it wasn't so easy to convert. She found the best possible moves to just continue the game. And then uh, in the end, uh, I just tricked her with one tactic. Uh, and then it was, it got easier for me to play. So congratulations on the win on the first round. Of course, this is a two-game match. So tomorrow you play with the black pieces. And what would you be your strategy for tomorrow? Uh, no strategy. It's such uh, after a long time, I'm getting to play chess on the board. So I'm just going to enjoy it. Of course. When was your last tournament then? How long have you been since playing the on the board chess? Uh, I think my last was 2019 March. Uh, well, uh, like a GP. So that's nearly. 2020. Sorry. That's nearly a year and a bit, no? Yeah. yeah. And how, how how did you feel when you started? Uh, did you do some training matches on real wood before coming here? No, of course I was uh, like practicing on the board, uh, but uh, it's always different to play a tournament. So definitely, I enjoyed playing uh, chess on the board again. You were telling me that this is your ninth uh, cup or world championship uh, competition. That's a lot of uh, championships. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the first one uh, was World Cup in 2000. And then from 2004, World Championships, uh, the same format. So this is uh, definitely my ninth. Uh, yeah, I played uh, many world championships. That's a lot. And you were telling me also that uh, you'd been in Sochi before in 2015 for the World Cup. Uh, sorry, yes, for the for the World Cup. Yeah. World Championship. How did you do in that on that occasion? I mean, uh, I lost in semi-finals with Maria, and I got bronze medal uh, in the world championship. So I was in the same like same tournament hall. Uh, it's been six years around, so definitely, yeah, I'm uh, more familiar to this place. Okay, well, good, good luck tomorrow, and I hope you are able to achieve your your results in this tournament. Thank you so much.
time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Thank you.